Fresh news, smart talk, all day. The views and opinions of the hosts and guests are their own and do not necessarily reflect the position of the management and staff of Guardian Networks. The FNM setting their convention for June 1st. The GBPA payment deadline is up. And that new electricity bill, when it comes into force, will help to bring relief to the vulnerable, according to the energy minister. It's all straight ahead this morning. I'm Dwight Strawn, and this is Morning Blend. Wake up today. Wake up, it's a new day. It's the start of the start of the new way. You know that day. It's the start of the end of the old way. Wake up, it's a new day. Wake up, it's a new day. Good morning again, Bahamas. It is Friday, April 26th, 2024. This is Morning Blend on Guardian Radio 96.9. Again, I'm quite strong. In a moment, Chester Robards will be here on a Friday. Also this morning, it is Autism Awareness Month. We're going to be talking with Reach Bahamas about autism in the Bahamas. And then later in business, we are remembering John Beadle, a legendary artist who passed away a few weeks ago. We'll talk with some of his contemporaries and colleagues this morning. That's all ahead, but first, it's time for The Overnight, the latest breaking news from while we're sleeping, and the top national and international headlines this morning. Overnight, uh, with the FNM plagued by disunity and in some instances infighting, the Central Council of the party voted to hold a one-day convention on June 1st, where all offices will be vacant. FNM leader Michael Pintar telling the NASA Guardian after that meeting that this will be the final voting convention prior to the next general election, and there will be no nominations from the convention floor. Nominations for the June 1st convention will open on Monday, April 29th. That's Monday coming and close on Friday, May 3rd. That means that if former Prime Minister Dr. Ruminis wishes to launch a bid for leadership, as has been widely speculated, he has just one week in which to nominate. Pintar says it's time for unity within the FNM. He had previously foreshadowed that the convention would be later in the year, maybe late summer. Asked why the decision was made to call the convention in June, he said there were several reasons, one of which is a real possibility. He says that, quote, given its challenges and its performance, challenges in finding the resources required to execute some of the important functions of the government and some of the issues that are likely to arise over time, I think that there's a real possibility that we may go to an early election. The FNM elected Pintar, leader in November 2021, just over two months after Minnis led the party to a humiliating defeat at the polls in a general election he called eight months before one was constitutionally due. 
Well, the 30-day deadline that the Davis administration gave the Grand Bahama Port Authority to pay $357 million that the government claims the GBPA owes has come and gone. It expired yesterday with Freeport's municipal authority making no such payment, apparently. Attorney General Ryan Pinder confirming that yesterday and also confirmed that lawyers for the government and the GBPA met in Grand Bahama. When asked whether the matter will head to arbitration, Pinder said he does not speak to dispute resolution strategy in the media. Earlier in the day, Prime Minister Phil Davis responding to a reporter's question on the sidelines of an event in Providence said that the process was moving forward and that the lawyers were meeting. He said, quote, if there's no concrete way forward, we'll continue the process as ordained by the arrangements that exist between us. After concern raised in Parliament this week about an ongoing fuel leak in Marsh Harbor, Ibaco, Minister for the Environment Vaughn Miller says the government is actively involved in managing the situation. The leak has been coming from a fuel line of a service station. That's according to St. Anne's MP Adrian White, who raised the issue in the House on Wednesday, showing photos of the leak, which he labeled an environmental disaster that hasn't been given adequate attention by the government. But Miller says the government is holding the polluter responsible and that steps have been taken to address the matter. And while a new bill would allow Bahamas Power and Light to set its own tariffs, Minister of Energy and Transport Joe Beth Colby Davis assuring the public that it will not mean unnecessary and extreme costs for the public, and instead, the government seeks to provide relief for those who are most vulnerable. From the courts... A man on trial for allegedly threatening to kill the Prime Minister will learn his fate next month. The Chief Magistrate will give his decision in the case of Isaac Roberts on May 8th. Prosecutors say Roberts called the Central Police Station on February 8th, 2023, and said that Prime Minister Davis would be killed if Coalition of Independent Leader Lincoln Bain wasn't released from police custody. Constable Drexel Maycock said an unidentified man called the station and asked if Bain was still in custody. The man hung up the phone when Maycock asked who was calling. About three or five minutes later, Maycock said the phone rang again. He said that that's when he answered the same man who had called earlier. said, quote, if you don't release Lincoln Bain, Brave will be dead. Maycock said he told his superiors about the call and police control. The police control was contacted. The calls were traced to Roberts, who was arrested later that day. When interviewed by Inspector Demetrius Taylor, Roberts admitted to calling the Central Police Station twice. According to Taylor, in the first call, Robert said he asked if Lincoln Bain was still in custody. Taylor says in the second call, Robert said words to the effect, quote, release Lincoln Bain or Brave Dave is gone. Taylor said he asked Roberts what he meant, and if he meant he was going to kill Davis, that's when Roberts allegedly said that he wouldn't put someone else, he wouldn't, but someone else might, based on the protests going on at that time. And a man sentenced to three years in prison for unlawful entry, assault, and a dangerous instrument, and causing harm, abandoned his appeal against his sentence. Kelsio Clark received the sentence following a guilty plea before Magistrate Algernon Allen Jr. Clark committed the offenses two months after he had been released from prison after serving time for similar crimes. He's scheduled to be released from prison on January 30th, 2026. Initially, Clark had wanted to proceed with the appeal after being told that he risked the possibility of having his sentence increased. However, a few minutes later, Clark said that he would, quote, just let it be. Overseas, Haiti opening a new political chapter with the installation of a transitional council tasked to pick a new prime minister and prepare for eventual presidential elections in hopes of quelling spiraling gang violence that has killed thousands in the Caribbean country. Ariel Henry, the Prime Minister who had been locked out of the country for the past couple of months due to violence, cleared the way for the transition by presenting his resignation in a letter signed in Los Angeles. The document was released Thursday in Haiti on the same day as the new Transitional Council was sworn in to choose a new Prime Minister and Cabinet. Henri's outgoing cabinet chose Economy and Finance Minister Michel Patrick Boisvert as interim prime minister. In the meantime, it was not immediately clear when the Transitional Council would name its own choice for interim prime minister. 
The council was officially sworn in at the National Palace in downtown Port-au-Prince early yesterday as the pop of sporadic gunfire erupted nearby, prompting some officials to look around the room. Council has been urged to seek a safer venue because gangs have launched daily attacks in the area. And the Palestinian militant group Hamas has said for more than 15 years that it could accept a two-state compromise with Israel, at least a temporary one. But Hamas has also refused to say that it would recognize Israel or renounce its armed fight against it. For Israel and many others, especially in the wake of Hamas's October 7th attack that spurred the latest war in Gaza, that's proof that Hamas is still bent on destroying Israel. But some observers say Hamas has signaled a potential pragmatism that could open a path to a solution. Hamas offers long-term truces instead of outright peace. It's dropped open pledges to destroy Israel, but endorses armed resistance and says it will fight for liberation of all of the land of Palestine. In sports, with just about a week to go before the World Relays return to the Bahamas, the facility that will host it is ready, according to the chief executive officer of the local organizing committee, Jermico Archer. Another multi-million dollar facelift has been done to the Thomas A. Robinson National Stadium, particularly the track, the third since it was handed over to the Bahamas by the People's Republic of China in 2012. Outfitted with a new Mondo track surface, the facility is now ready to host World Relays, World Athletics Relays Bahamas 2024, the major relay qualifier for the Olympic Games. Next, That's happening next weekend, May 4th and 5th. Hundreds of athletes are expected to arrive in town for the event in the coming days. Read more about it in today's Guardian Sports section. Tasha Stubbs continues to soar to new heights in the Javelin, the 11th grader from Queens College, still just 16 years old, winning the high school girls' javelin competition at the 128th running of the Penn Relays at historic Franklin Field at the University of Pennsylvania's campus in Philadelphia, braving below 60-degree weather to accomplish the feat. Stubbs had a massive throw of 47.17 meters on her sixth and final attempt for the winning mark in fact, she had the top two throws in the competition as her fifth attempt measured 46.770 meters. They were her second and third best throws ever soaring to new heights. Sophia Scott, representing Harry A. Burke High School out of Omaha, Nebraska, finished second. And Ileana Schneider of Cedar Crest High School in Lebanon, Pennsylvania, came in third. Two other Bahamians in the competition, D.R. Ray Scott and Kamara Strawn, both from Sachs and Gusson's College, finished 7th and 8th, respectively. Read more about this amazing feat for Tasha Stubbs in today's Guardian Sports section. And from the NFL, quarterbacks went off the draft board at a record-setting pace. Thursday night was the fourth time in the common draft era starting in 1967 that QBs went with the top three picks, with more going in the top 12. It was the fewest number of picks for six QBs to be drafted. This marked the first time five quarterbacks were drafted in the top 10 and matched the famed 1983 class with six first-rounders in all as teams throughout the league went in search of a big-time passer who can turn the fortunes of a franchise. The draft started in predictable fashion with Caleb Williams going first to Chicago, Jaden Daniels second to Washington, and Drake May third to New England, marking the second time in the past four drafts that QBs went 1-2-3. But in a note of caution, two of those highly drafted quarterbacks in 2021 have already been bust for their teams, with the New York Jets trading number two pick Zach Wilson earlier this week to Denver as part of a late-round draft pick swap. San Francisco dealing number three pick Trey Lance last August to Dallas for a fourth rounder. 
The only other time six quarterbacks were taken in the entire first round came in 1983 in a draft that produced Hall of Famers John Elway, Jim Kelly, and Dan Marino, along with less productive quarterbacks like Ken O'Brien, Tony Eason, and Todd Blackledge. That's sports, and that's the overnight. Time for your first look at weather. First look at weather for today, troughing associated and associated moisture will contribute to showers and uh, other convective activity across the southeast Bahamas, as well as portions of the central islands. Meanwhile, the northwest Bahamas will enjoy mostly fine and dry conditions, although a bit breezy due to a tightening pressure gradient over the country. Small craft operators, especially inexperienced ones in the southeastern islands, should avoid entering Atlantic waters. There is also a moderate risk of rip currents along Atlantic exposed coastlines. For today, for the Northwest Bahamas, your forecast calling for partly mostly sunny, warm, and slightly breezy conditions, becoming mostly fair, comfortable, and a bit breezy tonight with slight showers, slight, slight chance of showers, straight showers tonight. For boaters, a small craft caution will come into effect by late afternoon. Winds northeast to east to 10 to 15 knots, increasing to 15 to 20 knots by late afternoon then easing to 10 to 15 knots by late tonight. Seas 1 to 3 feet near shore and in sheltered areas, but up to 4 to 6 feet offshore and in Atlantic waters. For the central and southeast Bahamas today, partly cloudy to occasionally cloudy, warm and breezy with isolated showers and the chance of offshore thunderstorms through tonight. Small craft caution in effect for all Atlantic waters. Expect gusty winds and higher seas in or near showers and thunderstorms. Winds northeast to east at 10 to 15 knots, increasing to 15 to 25 knots by mid-afternoon, then easing to 10 to 15 knots by late tonight. Seas in the central bombs, 2 to 4 feet near shore and in sheltered areas, but up to 4 to 6 feet offshore in Atlantic waters. In the southeast Bahamas, 2 to 4 feet, but up to 7 feet in Atlantic waters. Temperatures today, we're looking at highs in the 80s, around 81 Fahrenheit, 27 Celsius. Overnight lows tonight, getting down about 68 Fahrenheit, 20 Celsius. We are at about 72 degrees right now under fair skies in Nassau. That's your first look at weather this morning. We'll have your extended outlook coming up after traffic in just a bit. It's a new day. You're listening to Morning Blend. When we come back, we're discussing the day's top stories right here on your home for fresh news and smart talk all day. Guardian Radio 96.9. The end of the old way. The signs are clear. It's time to pay less for your current mortgage by switching to Scotiabank. Enjoy lower interest rates and no payments up to two months when you switch to Scotiabank today. Plus, we'll even pay your switch costs. It's that easy. Ready to switch to Scotiabank? Call us today at 242-356-1697 or visit bs.scotiabank.com to switch your mortgage to become mortgage-free faster. Here's to the go-getters, the early risers, and the late-night dreamers. You, the visionaries, painting futures in your mind, in your studio, your office, your sacred space. Here's to the adventurers, explorers of every realm. To you, the innovators, turning the cogs of progress in a world where connection is a lifeline, a pathway to possibilities. Alive is the perfect connection for everyone, every lifestyle. Every day. Visit BeAlive.com today. 
Living with a neurological condition shouldn't define you. At Cleveland Clinic in Florida, we do whatever it takes to make life better today while discovering new treatments for a brighter tomorrow. From epilepsy management to specialized spine care and brain tumor surgery, we're delivering world-class neurology care for the day-to-day, for the days you live for, for every care in the world. Visit clevelandclinicflorida.org slash Caribbean. Looking to elevate your gadget game or a tech trouble simply slowing you down? Escape to a world of innovation at Custom Computers, your go-to store for the latest cutting-edge tech. Whether you need to upgrade your life with the best from Apple and Windows or your device needs a little TLC, the Custom Computers know-how store is the destination for unbeatable expertise and quality repairs. With two convenient locations, there's a Custom Computers near you on Patton Street in Palmdale and Caves Village. Or call 399 399- at Simplified Lending, we've unscrambled the loan process, making it fast and hassle-free. Personal, business, medical. You apply, we'll reply in as little as 24 hours. Call us today at 603-1730 or stop by Simplified Lending in the R&D Plaza on JFK Drive. Simplified Lending for Simplified Living. Simplified Lending for Simplified Living. Simplified Lending. At Winnie's, we are different. We don't just use beef. It's fresh, never frozen. Our burgers are square because we never cut corners. Served hot off the grill with fresh lettuce, tomatoes, onions, and American cheese. We believe in fast food done right. Always serving fresh, never frozen beef. Order a hot, juicy Dave single, double, or triple. Made with fresh, never frozen beef. Now only at Wendy's. Different inside and out. Get ready for another exciting Fish Fry Friday, May 3rd at Margaritaville, downtown Nassau. Kicking off the month of May, celebrating Nurses Month. From 6.30 p.m. to 11.30 p.m., featuring the Big Band Visage and DJ Beats. We salute all the nurses as we celebrate Nurses Month at Fish Fry Friday. My girl call her and if I leave home, well, I tell she are real close. Girl, I almost did. Admission $25 general, $55 for the Bahamian Buffet at Vacation Cafe and the party. All government workers get $5 off their entry with your work ID. You can win passes to dine at Vacation Cafe and passes to the water park. So make your plans to be at Fish Fry Friday. For the best in Soka Bahamian and your favorite old school jams. Fish Fry Friday, Margaritaville, downtown Nassau, 12 Old Bob, May 3rd. RBC. Are you buying a home, renovating, or exploring mortgage options? With cash back and up to 90% financing, we'll find the perfect mortgage for you. Pre-qualify in just 60 seconds and get connected with a mortgage specialist today. Visit rbc.com slash mortgages slash all of you. RBC. Conditions apply. You've seen electric cars on the road, but isn't it time you drive one? Easy Car Sales invites you to experience the smooth, powerful ride and immerse yourself in the luxury and latest tech features. Find out why the Bahamas is going electric. Visit easy242.com and book your test drive now. What are you waiting for? Save money, drive smarter. There's an EV waiting for you at Easy Car Sales. Screws and Fasteners World, Balfour Avenue and Palm Beach Street has those hard-to-find fasteners for you right now. You can find stainless steel regular hex, carriage bolts, galvanized bolts, threaded rods, nails, self-tap screws, sex bolts, anchor bolts, turnbuckles, masonry tools, hand tools, and weed whacker strings. Check out the rope selection and car body fasteners too. Special orders are welcome. It's your number one fastener store. Screws and Fasteners World, Balfour Avenue and Palm Beach Streets. Call 326-1976. Wake up, wake up, it's a new day. Wake up, it's a new day. It's wake the start up. of the start of the new way. You know that it's the start of the end of the old way. Wake up. Wake up. 
Welcome back to Morning Blend here on Guardian Radio 96.9. We are streaming live on GuardianTalkRadio.com and on the Guardian Radio app for smart devices. We're also on your televisions on Cable Bahamas Channel 969 and BTC Flow Channel 612. You can tweet us at MorningBlend969 or Facebook.com slash MorningBlend969. Text us on the Guardian Radio text line powered by BTC 4224796. Standard text rate supply. Once again, I'm Dwight Strawn. Joining me now after he abandoned us on Wednesday, we've got Chester Robards. Chester Robards, good morning. He was run out. Hmm? Good morning. Is that how you say good morning? Well, <laughs> uh, great to have you with us. Glad to be here. Wonderful, wonderful. We've got a lot to talk about this morning. Coming up, um, it is April. That means it's Autism Awareness Month. We are going to talk with Reach Bahamas about autism here. Um, uh, that's coming up in a few minutes. And then later in business, we are remembering the great the legendary John Beadle. And uh, we're going to talk with um, some people who knew him very, very well and the impact he had on art and the art community here in the Bahamas. That's all ahead, but let's begin with what else is in the news. And in the news, hey, let's get this in. Uh, this is uh, just fantastic news um, coming out of Pennsylvania, the Penn Relays. Um, uh, this is just great. Our Sheldon Longley writing about it in today's Guardian Sports. Tasha Stubbs in the Javelin, the 11th grader. She's just 16 years old, winning the high school girls' javelin competition at the Penn Relays in Pennsylvania Thursday. Um, he has here braving below 60 degree weather. I mean, that's not like that horrible, is it? I mean, are you how far below? What is it? What are you saying? You think that's, I mean, below, like how far below 20 or is it like 55? That's not that. What does really? What? What are you saying? What do you think? They throw in javelins and big jackets. <laughs> I mean, you run around the track a little bit, you get yourself warmed up and oh, you okay, can do it. And then, so. then, no, anyway. You're but um, run in cold weather, clearly. Oh, hmm, well, anyway, she did it. She won. She beat all, all the people from all over the U.S. And, um, and, and just fantastic stuff there. That's awesome. Um, beating second place Sophia <laughs> Scott from Omaha, Nebraska, and e- Ileana Schneider from Cedar Crest High School in Lebanon, Pennsylvania. Um, two other behaviors are in the competition as well, both from SAC. No. Oh. Dior Ray Scott and Kamara Strawn. They finished seventh and eighth. Nice. So look at that. It did good. Really great stuff yeah. there. And um, we're expecting even more amazing <laughs> stuff. SAC sent the, and a whole a whole Olympic team to the pen relays this right. year. And so we're waiting to hear what comes out of it today and the rest of the weekend, right? Um, but fantastic. Congratulations to Tasha Stubbs. And um, only 16. So can you imagine? Can you imagine? Wonderful, wonderful there. And, of course, the countdown is on to the World Relays right here. It's going to be next weekend. Mm -hmm. And I'm very excited about that as well. All right. So the big headlines in the papers. This came out of nowhere-ish. The FNM, we knew that they were planning on having a convention this year. Mm -hmm. But apparently it's going to be June 1st. That's you a could say, a bit away. yeah, days, days away, yeah, yeah. June 1st, and get this, nominations, you only have a one-week window, barely a week, next week, mm-hmm. that's it, Monday to Friday. So, um, our Candia Dame's writing about that today in the Nassau Guardian, with the party plagued by disunity and in some instances infighting. The Central Council of the FNN, the Free National Movement, last night voted to hold a one-day convention on June 1st, 2024, where all offices will be vacant. FNM leader Michael Pintar telling the NASA Guardian after the, second, after the meeting last night that this will be the final voting convention prior to the next general election, and there will be no nominations on the convention floor. Nominations for June 1st for the convention will open on Monday, Monday coming, April 29th, and close on Friday, 
May 3rd. One week. One, one work, working week. Not mm-hmm. a full week. No, not full week. Five days. This means that if former Prime Minister Dr. Hubert Minnis wishes to launch a bid for the leadership, as has been widely speculated, he has just one week to nominate. Now, Pintard is saying that it's time for unity in the party. Uh, he says, quote, we are going to have a non-voting convention to deal with a number of the other business for the party prior to the end of March of next year. But we thought this issue of the question of unity in the party needed to be settled. And we believe that one of the ways to address this is to, once and for all, determine which team will be leading us into the election so that the party can then galvanize behind the team and we fully expect that the team that is in place will continue, is the team that will continue. Pintar had previously foreshadowed a convention for late summer. We're kind of thinking around September or something. Um, I, was asked, a later. Hmm? I was thinking a little later. Yeah. Asked why the decision was made to call the convention in June. He said there are several reasons. He said, quote, one, there is a real possibility that the government, given its, ch- its challenges in performance, challenges in finding the resources required to execute some of the important functions of government, and some of the issues that are likely to rise over time, I think that there is a real possibility that they may go early to an election. Hmm. Hmm. Okay. Because that, that, that works well. You'll wait for that. I don't understand. <clears throat> that, that it works well for people? I, I, mm, mm. Okay. And then he said, quote, we need to make sure that our house is in order. And so the question of us... Um, uh, singing house. from the same hymn sheet is important. And so for those that harbor in their mind the hope that they will win any of the positions that will become vacant, they have one more shot at seeking a mandate from the rank and file of the free national movement. And we wish to give them that opportunity so that they can then settle down, <laughs> support the mission, and support the leadership that's in charge of the mission and message. And so those are the same reasons, some of the, some of the reasons why we needed to move with a sense of urgency and address those issues. Well, now the FNM elected Pintar leader of the FNM in uh, November 2021, just two months after uh, Hubert Menes led the party to a humiliating defeat at the polls in a general election he called eight months before one's constitutionally due. Pintard and Minnis were two of seven FNM MPs who were re-elected, all but one, Adrian Gibson in Long Island, one with reduced margins when compared to the 2017 election. Under pressure, Minnis eventually announced that he would not run again for leader in the 2021 leadership race of November. But in the, same, but in the time since Pintard, a former Minnis cabinet minister, has been party leader, there's been speculation that Minnis has been mounting a leadership comeback. Minnis has had limited involvement in party affairs. He was noticeably absent from the West Grand Bahama and Bimini by-election campaign last year and um, has in some cases been speaking out of step with the party. But he has shied away from saying either way whether he, will in, whether he intends to run again for FNM leader. Minnis was not at that council meeting last night, apparently. Now, asked last night if he is confident that he will be re-elected leader, Pintard said, quote, We are very confident. We believe that we have done our job in terms of attracting a number of persons who stayed home in the last general election. We are seeing them participate not just in the constituency associations, we are seeing them participate when we call council meetings, whether it's in Grand Bahama, whether it's in New Providence. There are persons who had basically stayed away, persons who have served this party with distinction, who have not been integrated into the work of the party. They are now back. Okay, and then there's a lot of Another party talk here in the article. But okay, let's get your reaction to this um, really quickly. I don't have to dwell on it too long because there's a lot of other things we want to get to. But let's get your reaction to this. It's a little bit earlier than usual. Um, what do you think the outcome will be here once and for all? Uh, will this settle the issues? And, um, Does it ever? <coughs> well, usually, leading up to the next election and then afterward there's chaos again if things don't go go the way that certain people wanted it. Um, but let's hear from you. 323-6232. 325-4316. 325-4316. Three, two, three, six, two, three, two, 
325-4259, toll free 242-300-5720, tweet us, Facebook us, text us 422-4796 on the text line. Let's go to the phone lines and see what you have to say. Good morning, caller, you're on the air. Good morning, Dwight, how are you? Doing well, good morning. Wonderful, good morning, Chester Robert. Good, good morning. Wonderful. I have one thing to say to Dr. Minnis if he's planning on running in, the, in the, 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 the thing that they're having, the convention that they're having for leadership, don't. Thanks for taking my Wait, call. Wait, hold on. Don't, don't just do that and run. Um, wh- why? Why are you saying that? I, I, I pull it. You can see I pull in the Joe Biden on him, like Joe Biden, tell Iran and them, don't. <laughs> That's it. Thanks for taking my call. Oh, okay. All right. Well, um, okay. 323-6232. Three two five four three one six three two five four two five nine. Tweet us, Facebook us, text us four two two four seven nine six. Some text messages. Um, um, what's wrong with the feed on cable nine six nine? You got to call cable Bahamas, folks. That is definitely a cable Bahamas issue. Call cable Bahamas. Call them. Call them frequently. Right, and it's not apparently everybody. We've been told that it's better for people who have fiber, but if you're on the old coax cable, it's not good. Um, but even for those people, it's, uh, I know some people at my mom's house, it's like some rooms. Um, so something's going on, but you need to call, call Cable Bahamas. Okay, and if you can't get them, of course, you can listen to us online on your computers, your tablets, your any smart devices, guardiantalkradio.com, or on the app, our app, even Cable Bahamas' Rev app, Rev Go app, and uh, BTC's um, uh, Flow to Go app. And um, if you have BTC channel 612, if you don't have a regular radio, which apparently is going the way of the dodo, 96.9 FM. But anyway. Even in people's cars? Well, plenty of people have cars that don't have radios that could pick up That's because the Hayman ja- stations. Hmm. Oh. But yes, and then we got to get you um, hooked up with some of the people around here who can fix your radio. So we need to provide we need to start yeah, they, they a exist. partnership with them so yeah. they can let everybody know. Don't just take that. That's true. The number of people who say, oh, I, yeah, have, I a, can't listen to Bayman. That's, that's <laughs> insane. <laughs> let's, let's fix this. So we're going to put, we need, let me put this out there. We've been talking about this for a while behind the scenes, but we need to partner with all the people who can get these radios sorted out. Um, we're going to give you some airtime even to put the announcement out there so that we can get get people there guarding radio. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right, so uh, this texture says, the PLP is like a wounded animal who's back against the wall. Where is this coming from? What? They are fighting like death for survival. We, we, the PLP, okay, many people are pitiful and sorrowful for a dying animal. The PLP is appealing to emotions. The PLP. This is out of nowhere. What are you talking about? You sure? They got they, the right party? Yeah, I don't think they do. They, they're having a good time. They're out there... Fly it all around the world, partying. What are you talking about? Anyway, um, okay. We're talking about the FNM right now, though, Texter. Maybe you meant to say that one. Anyway, uh, good morning, all. Let con- let's congratulate Michael Pintard in advance as he leads the FNM and forms the next government of the Bahamas. Well, okay. All right. Interesting. Uh, this one says, your minister needs to have a seat. You mean in the house, in the house? Or, <laughs> or, or in the backyard? <laughs> Which one? Which one? You gave away eight months and now decide you miss being leader? No. I guess they mean the backyard. Mm-hmm. By the pool. No, or in his terms, NPO. You remember that? Mm-hmm. Never forget that one. Um, uh, this one says, I'm a bit curious. How was Fred Mitchell able to say in the House of Assembly Wednesday saying who will be the leader after June 1st? Did the FNM tell him about the scheduled convention? Oh, I didn't see that. Did, did he say that? Yeah. Well, look at that. Well, he knows everything. People you know. know things, yeah. Especially him. And plenty of people around here, despite how they carry on, are mm-hmm. very close. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So you'd, hmm. let's take this call. Good morning. You're on the air. Yes, good morning, Dwight. Uh, just let me first say uh, it's, a free, it's a free call from your cell phone, 242-300-2200. Call Kilo Bahamas. Okay. Uh, the, the, I'd like to take the opportunity now to congratulate the incoming Prime Minister 
Mr. Michael. Did Tim you send Tim. that text before? <laughs> no, I didn't. No, oh, okay. I'm sure, so I'm sure a lot of people are thinking. The oh, same thing. okay. Mm-hmm. Yes, because it's time for us to make preparation for the future. What's now? What's new? What's next? Uh, the, but uh, Dr. Minnis basically had squandered uh, four four plus years as prime minister. If you have a two hour show one day. I could go through 118 mistakes that he made in governance. We'll need a six-hour show for that. Right. So but essentially what, because what happens is that we are in a, we were in a transition period, and the things, there's a lot of things that happened that was tremendous opportunity. If you look at the, his promises that was made, his, his total, total intent was to, was to break them. He sowed disharmony in his party. Uh, we saw it. He had total disrespect for us as citizens, as uh, participatory in solving our issues as well. As soon as he got us, the, was that thing uh, the competent authority that it became, it became a dictatorial type environment where what, what he says becomes an edict spoken, let it so, let it be. And so I think it's time for us to no longer look to the past leadership. They had the opportunity to possess themselves. I think it's time for us to look for uh, new visionary leadership that looks to embrace. Now, if you take the opportunity, uh, uh, Dwight, and go and look and observe Mr. Michael Pintard, he had a consolatory type environment where he says governance is for all. It started from the time he became leader. You could, you could, it, it's there on the record where he says it's governance for all and that when, when, when leadership comes in, then they should govern for all, not just for the select few. Not right. team. So let me ask well, you this question, right. Seattle, my good friend Seattle. Yeah. Are you going to become the uh, the FNM Anton? Is this what's happening here, or, or what, are we, what, are we, what are we looking at? No, I, no I, would, I, I could, but guess what? Unlike Anton, who is now somewhat maturing, you know, in opposition, he saw no, he saw no good. Now, what I do is, uh, when the PLP does something good, I will speak to it. I've been waiting. But in the meantime, we have a country in crisis, and this is why uh, we, uh, Mr. Pintar was talking about the early election. If you follow the data, you would see that we are in crisis. We have uh, uh, a growth that doesn't incorporate people, electricity bills that's out the corner. You have a government that has no respect for transparency, accountability, integrity, or anything of that sort. We have spin doctors. We have million, what, $60 million a year now spent for consultants. Right, just pause for a second. And Chester, you're a business, you're a business writer, right? Yes. Imagine that you spend $300 million on consultants. Well, the last government, Minnis spent $250 million on consultants, right? And couldn't produce. A, for a small company called the Bahamas, would you think from a business perspective it should happen to that CEO? You? you think the company should take him back? Absolutely not. If there's... And if the company is right now, you have a new CEO that's got about to spend $300 million on the same part and have not been able to produce for almost three years, right? Do you think we should even consider that CEO to continue? Well, you know, the people of the Bahamas don't necessarily think like the people who get to vote in these political parties. Um, uh, do they understand how the rest no, of us see that's things? That's what I'm saying. If they, if they choose to understand this, they could remember it's more of us than it is of them. They don't care. And no, but that's what I'm saying to you. If they, then if they choose to sit in opposition and have the same uh, level of governance we have, we need a government. We're 50 out of history. We're still battling with 20th century, 20th century concept. We need a, a government, a leadership in government that will actually look for the, what is called the swarm intelligence, the collective intelligence of all of us. We need to move to an ownership economy past the 50th year, and we don't need more of the same. And I'm saying in my observation of Michael Pintard when he was in government, as well as when now that he's taken over the leadership, has shown me that capability. My political party has yet to begin to do that. We have a beautiful document called the Blueprint for Change. The problem is it's written in a language that nobody in there speaks, 21st mm-hmm. century. Okay. And so Excellent. that's where the problem is. So let's build, let's, let's build a better Bahamas. But let me just end and say this Really quickly. If you want to have a better governance, it requires all of us to get involved from the constituency level and on up. And so I'm inviting people to get involved with their community, get involved with the policies and programs and procedures you'd like to see change, and most of all, demand 21st century adaptation is the only way we can be globally. Thank okay, you. thank you very much, C. Allen. Appreciate it. Let's take this call, and then we'll get to your messages. Good morning, caller on the air. Yes, good morning, Mr. Strong. Hi. Good morning it's to both. It's a weird connection. You, we, we can barely make out what you're saying. Okay, good morning to both of you. Oh, boy.
boy. I think you might. Oh, wait. Try it again. Good morning. No, no, no. That's not working. Oh, you got to call us back. Call us back. Call us right back. We'll take a call back. Let's take this one. Good morning. You're on the air. Good morning, Dwight. Good morning, Chester. Hi, good morning. Um, The only thing I'm going to say to this matter um, is that uh, I think this is a very, very interesting time um, in the uh, FNM administration as far as what I can see from the outside looking in. I believe that uh, the core for unity in that party is, is so essential, uh, seeing that it appear, apparently the leader is also, fe- the current leader is also feeling that way. On the outside here, we can see that there's some discombobulation, but I believe that they can pull it together. My whole, my whole thing is that I would love to see a strong, unified opposition, along with many of the other persons out here in opposition against this current administration, to, to really bring about a, 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 a unity and strength, whereas we could get some of these policies that, that is really affecting the Bahamian people negatively, that we can actually go inside there and actually get some real work done. The Bahamian people are suffering today, and it seems as if all the cries are actually falling on deaf ears. Um, I think the one-day convention would basically prove not only just for the FNMs, but also for we as ordinary average Bahamian citizens, that uh, there is a strong unified opposition, although small in numbers, they can still go in and get some work done. Um, that's the only thing I'm going to say to this. I'm, I am very interested to see how the turnout of this one-day convention is going to be. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, may the best man win. But... Um, you know, thanks for taking my call. I'll okay. continue to listen to the rest of the program and the persons who call in with great interest. Thank, thank you. Thank you very much. Again. Appreciate it. All right, let's get your text messages. The person says here, there are many Bahamians who still get upset at hearing the prior, the name <laughs> Prime Minister Minnis. <laughs> Plenty. Um, he knows he can never win a general election in the Bahamas again. I think Minnis is just being spiteful and vindictive against those who never truly supported him in the party. Well, we don't even know if he's going to nominate. Right. We'll see, right? right? But hmm. um, this person says, your incoming Prime Minister Michael Pintard, Luther fully supports you and all your, the delegates are yours. That's how it works. Yeah. Interesting. Okay. Um, also, the text you could say on text. We'll see. Um, uh, my earnest, earnest prayer, spare us from a minute's return. They have three praying, praying <laughs> hands going up there in the text. Hmm. I shudder as I think about it. Mind you, I thought a PM could not get any worse than minutes, but Davis is giving him a real run for the money. Yeah, you think so? Yeah, no, no, no. Yeah, boy, that's a stretch. Um, this election will determine the fate of the 242. I could tell you. Um, we will know whether we're on the path to a, to a two-peat, um, if, depending on the outcome of this June 1st election. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. If, if some people are silly enough to do certain things, we'll say the first time since 97. We could say that already by June 2nd. <laughs> We're gonna have a, a repeat. I could, I could bet money on it, but let's see. Mm. But again, the people in these parties don't think like the rest of us. They don't live in the same country we live in. They never do. They huh. never have. Yeah. When, whether they're in opposition or not, they're it's just, it's a very strange they're place. Just rowdy factions. Well, they 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 see the world in a different way. Both of them, all of them. It's not what we think. Mm-mm. Anyway, um, I think the FNM only appeals to the diehards. What does that mean? They really need to at least pretend they were in power a few years ago. Listening to them makes me feel like I'm being gaslit. In all fairness, the parties are exactly the same. They think the same and seek advice from the same places. <laughs> Let's all unite and support the return of NPO fishing from the moon, eating stew fish, and lockdowns. I'm sorry, what? Mm. Uh, y'all are being unfair with the lockdown thing. I mean, right. I, I think you've been even, and you know, we, 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 we don't, come on, everybody, that's what we thought, which was probably not necessary now in hindsight, even though many people used to call it, we used to rile them for saying it was unnecessary, but they, it looks like they might have been kind of, sort of, maybe a little bit, maybe, maybe, right, maybe we did go a little over the top, the whole world, a little bit, but we didn't know, you didn't know. No? Chester, you're looking confused. You don't think we went a little overboard? No, I don't think so. No? I mean, I think there are some things that were overboard, yeah. Hmm. Anyway, Minnis had his opportunity and squandered it. Congratulations to Michael Pintard, the next PM of the Bombs. Y'all are really getting out of... (laughs) Okay. Well, Um, I mean, that's the way he was talking in the house anyway, right? 
Dr. Minnis is a lockdown PM. Don't want him back. Jeez. <laughs> Let the Minnis hate go, Dwight. It's consuming you. I would not say hate. I, just disappointment. It was, right? There were lots, but right? We now hear the current Prime Minister say they are abiding by their document, their pre-election document, the Blueprint for Change. I was thinking that Minnis was going to do that too, but apparently that was, those are just suggestions. Yeah, yeah. That was not what they were going to do. And so, you know, which one is it behaving leaders? Are we supposed to take this thing as the Bible or this is just notes? You mean the manifesto? The manifesto blueprints, the, whatever you want to call them. The manifesto? Or is it depending on the day and how you feel and the topic? No, we have to go by our... Mm. No, oh, please, we don't have time for that. We've got other bigger issues to deal with. Oh, okay. And you'll hear that from the same person, which mm. is wild. But anyway. Okay. Um, and he had eight whole months. Mm -hmm. He had eight whole months. Yeah. Eight months. The PLP needs Minnis to win, like the Democrats need uh, Trump to win. Well, <laughs> I don't know if the Democrats, anyway, anyway, that's a little bit different, but hey. Um, good morning. All I hear from C. Allen and Anton is how to say data and brown nose talks about your career. Oh, boy. And that's, oh, boy. Okay, yeah. So these mm -hmm. diehard grassroots supporters end up. <laughs> this is just a, I tried. I, this is a lot. This is a lot. A lot for me to read. Uh, you should call in and say these things. <laughs> <laughs> Can they? <laughs> well, we could always cut the, cut the call. Um, Brave has sold the, the PLP beyond the competence. What? The country's messed up. What now? Okay. Um, oh, my gosh. Dwight actually admits he was wrong about COVID and that some of the calls are right, a sign of the end times. Yeah, so get your affairs in order, right? Mm. Huh. Um, Dwight, uh, what's the blueprint for change? Um, plans to tax the Bahamas to death, let illegals invade the Bahamas and fly over the world eating caviar? Mm -hmm. um, I, I don't know if you read it again. I don't know, but mm. um, that's because that's what they're saying. That's all they're seeing happening, I guess. Um, Okay. Well, maybe it's in the fine print. I don't know. Um, uh, Dwight, the problem wasn't the lockdowns and the curfews. The problem was there were two sets of rules, one for the rich, one for the poor. Not everyone was under lockdown and following COVID protocols. That's my biggest problem with Minnis' rule. It was unfair, and some people suffered while others prospered. Now, we don't know if he was aware of that, right? We cannot say that he knew that there were parties going on at 2 a.m. at places all over the island which I heard really? about. I do not know this because really? I didn't attend them. But I saw pictures and I heard and saw cars um, and the evidence of cars. And there let's was, not pretend. There was, there was places selling mm -hmm. liquor. Yeah, yeah, well. I mean, that was a bit of an overreach, right? Mm -hmm. We all was, were all wondering what that was about. Why would you do that? Mm -hmm. That doesn't make any sense. And um, his excuses for that were a bit strange. But um, otherwise, um, yeah, you can't say that he knew that was going on, right? Um, mm -hmm. Sure you can. can you say that? In his country? Did, uh, he some people eating? heard me say that just now, didn't know that was going on. I, I'm sure they didn't. Right. But, but the plenty leader, people the of the country. Plenty people knew. I mean, you know, how do you know? We knew. <laughs> some people knew. <laughs> Let's take this call and then we're going to take a break. Good morning, caller. You're on the air. Yeah, good morning, Mr. Strong. Good morning, Chester. Hi, good morning. Good morning. Yeah, Chester. Yes, sir. Yeah, you, you, are, you are very important. Uh, Dwight uh, seemed to make a little facetious joke on you this morning. You said it, right? Did I? What, what was it? <laughs> and you said he, he ducked out or whatever. Or Aban whatever. Abandoned. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but, you know, uh, Chester's well poised. Uh, and I, I listen to Chester, not only because he's poised, but he, he speaks slowly, but he, he, he's, he's, not, he's not that loud. I, I wish I could be like that, but I'm so emotional. You have to forgive me sometimes, Mr. Strong. But what I wanted to touch on, right, was the fact that you, you have to bear with callers in the fact that what's in their brains. So we, we, we would have seen the article from the Wall Street Journal concerning the farce and the disinformation about outdoor transmission dynamics in which the scientists deliberately deceived the world, admitted by, uh, by, by Valencia, the pretty lady from the CDC or whatever, right? Deliberately gave misinformation on outdoor tra transmission dynamics in which it actually said that it, it's basically non-existent, okay? It has nothing to do with me. So what I'm vexed about with Dr. Minnis is and, and everybody, every third world leader, following the, the science blindly, okay? And the facts are out there. And, and what happens was, in Europe, 
and another first world countries that they worship, you, you, you would realize that people were allowed to go out by themselves. So what I mean is there was no science. There, there, was, no, there was no argument for someone going out and walking their dog by themselves. There was, no, there was no danger to society if a husband and wife who live together go out and walk during the curfew hours. So in England, there was really no curfew for you once you was moving about by yourself. You understand what I'm saying, Mr. Strong? Mm, okay. So what happened was, why, would that, why was we not allowed to do that here? Go out and walk my dog anytime. There was no harm, even if the science what they were saying was true. So the fact that Mr. Minnis was willing to be so tyrannical towards his people shows that he was taking orders from global ordinances. He said the New World Order in a, in a documentary that, see, that KCX had, had highlight, highlighted. So, you know, we must all wake up. And then on top of that, I want to mention this, you know. But, but you know, important. before you go on, but look, look at the, the how weird some of us are. Because people will point, mainly f and will point at how during this time the murder rate went down. Um, to, and so, down if, if you have police on every, on, on every corner, well, you see, you go jogging, Dwight. so people yeah, like, sanity. people I kept saying they like this madness, which is, I said, pass the guardian, come now, see, you'll be fun, mm. et cetera, et cetera. But what I'm saying is, Mr. Strong, I, you broke a chain of thought, because really, I, I, I it, it, the thing is, I, I could remember, uh, uh, the, the, the facts about all, all door transmission dynamics, right? And the fact that they, they, they were following these science blindly. And that's, 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 that's what is hurtful. So the fact that he was so tyrannical towards his people, it, 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 it was hurtful because the science didn't pan out. It, 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 they say they, they were not lying, but let's say they were not telling the truth. Mm -hmm. But if I was on the radio knowing it, why is it that they didn't know it? Why is it everybody? Let me give you an example. Okay, the pandemic knew what it was designed to do. I have a friend. He has an apartment, okay? His apartment is it, 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 I, I it, quite dilapidated. So he, the tenants were there. They were not paying, and they're still not paying. And so what happens is he's signing the property over his daughter. He got a bill for 32000 the other day. And this building, that means the government is passing out these bills on years without checking the quality of people's bills. Nobody lived in that building for years. Only him one on the northern side. But they still sent him a bill for 32000 from 1990-something something or whatever up to now or whatever, whatever, whatever time it was, the parameters. But what I'm saying is it's designed to do just what it's doing. He, he, he has a, 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 a ferry boat. He, he, he spent about uh, almost 20 grand trying to get it back together. During this time, I watched this, yeah, I watched this man. This man always had money in his pocket. And, and so he was unable to make money during this time. And he, he's one of the people affected, but they sent him a bill for 32000 for, no, for a building that nobody was looking in, mm. was living in. So it, I, it, it'd be up against a rock and a hard place. Yeah. Bless her. Okay. All right. So this is, this is what happens. You, you mentioned the name, and all of a sudden we're back to 2020 and reliving the worst time of our lives. Oh, boy. Well, eh. okay. I hope, I hope people paid attention. Anyway, um, some more messages as we go to the break. This person says here, a major political party such as the FNM is having a rushed one-day convention, but I really hope Minnis is given another opportunity. He did well despite having the most difficult term for any PM. Okay. Um, those that are complaining about the lockdown shouldn't have been given the opportunity to do so as they like to run around and have a good time. Let's see how that would have turned out. Okay. Um, uh, when will the blueprint for change finally become an actual building for change? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh boy. Uh, Dwight, please stop. The health minister resigned because of a plane full of people that came in with no COVID protocols being observed. Stop it. He knew it. Um, well, that's different from about the people going out and having parties in the middle of the night. Um, but I, I don't know. I don't know. I'm just saying. Um, in any event, we know how some of us are. We will find any way, any opportunity to not abide by the law. Um, whether there's a pandemic or not. Yeah. So, hmm. COI for change, it's coming. So what? No. What was that for? It's here. Let's do it, Bahamas. Put aside, put these dinosaur parties aside and make the change. Okay. Um, Is that that singer? Uh, hmm? COI Larry or something like that? <laughs> <laughs> oh, Lord. Okay. <laughs> Um, this is, this is, okay, some of these, I don't know, anyway. Um, criminals adjusted, the brazen daylight murders and attempted murders were almost unheard of before the curfew. Now they happen almost every week. You're very confused. Uh, that was always happening. That was always happening. When did that, seriously? There weren't daytime murders before the pandemic? 
Oh, that's what they said? Yeah. Saying? The, no, 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 no. Um, but they might have been concentrated during that time, mm-hmm. right? Um, but it, it was happening. It was happening. Let's take the break. We're going to be back. This is Morning Blend on a Friday morning here on Guardian Radio. Stay with us. Uh, if they saw what I saw, they would fall the way I fell, but they don't know what you want. And baby, I would never tell. If they know what I know, they would never let you go. So guess what? So if I get jealous, I can't help it. I want every bit of you. I guess I'm selfish. This is Guardian Radio 96.9 FM, Nassau, Bahamas. RBC. Are you buying a home, renovating, or exploring mortgage options? With cash back and up to 90% financing, we'll find the perfect mortgage for you. Pre-qualify in just 60 seconds and get connected with a mortgage specialist today. Visit rbc.com slash mortgages slash all of you. RBC. Conditions apply. It is time for your first look at traffic for the morning, brought to you by RBC, a bank for all of you. In real-time traffic, we've got um, uh, heavy traffic on Milo Butler Highway from Fire Trail straight up to Tony Groom's Darling Highway, as usual. And Robinson Road is looking busy near Soldier and Prince Charles Drive, that intersection, and straight through to Old Trail. You're heading westbound. And Soldier looking busy through that intersection, straight up to Village, Wolf, and Bernard Road. We've also got um, Eastern Road, as usual, heavy traffic there, um, just uh, from about Fox Hill to Johnson Road, and then Carmichael looking busy westbound up to Coral Harbor Road. Um, just an important notice from the Ministry of Works, that they're going to begin uh, the drainage Culvert Rehabilitation Program on Bay Street between Elizabeth Avenue and Christie Street. That's scheduled to begin at 7 p.m. tonight and continue through Sunday. The section of Bay Street between Colbrook Lane and DeVoe Street will be closed to the motoring public for the duration of the work. So traffic is going to be diverted from Bay Street onto Colbrook Lane, then Dalswell Street east to Christie Street. And you're urged to follow the uh, posted signage and exercise caution. But again, that's going to start tonight on Bay Street. That is your Morning Blend traffic alert brought to you by RBC. Log on to rbc.com slash Caribbean slash all of you for more information. Seven fifty-five. Time for another check of your weather for today. Brought to you by Easy Car Sales. Troughing and associated moisture will contribute to showers and possible uh, can more convective activity across the southeast Bahamas as portions of the central islands as well. And uh, but in the northwest Bahamas, you'll enjoy mostly pleasant weather conditions. A bit breezy though, due to a tightening pressure gradient over the country. Small craft operators in the southeastern Bahamas should avoid entering Atlantic waters, especially uh, inexperienced small craft operators. There is a moderate risk of rip currents along Atlantic exposed coastlines as well. For today, for the northwest Bahamas, look for partly mostly sunny, warm, and breezy conditions becoming fair, comfortable, and a bit breezy tonight with a slight chance of a stray shower. For the central southeast Bahamas, partly cloudy to occasionally cloudy, warm, and breezy with isolated showers and the chance of offshore thunderstorms through tonight. Temperatures getting up to around 81 Fahrenheit, 27 Celsius. Overnight lows tonight getting down to about 68 Fahrenheit, 20 Celsius. 
In your extended outlook, troughing Saturday near the southeastern islands will shift east and away from the area while a frontal boundary lingers behind it, supporting some light to moderate showers across the southeastern islands, including the Turks and Caicos. Meanwhile, a light pressure gradient will promote breezy, very breezy, and rough marine conditions for all areas throughout the weekend as a robust high-pressure system will shift closer to the area. So for Saturday, expect a mix of sun and clouds in the northwest and central Bahamas, along with warm and windy conditions, turning partly cloudy, a bit breezy, and mild at night. A few light stray showers likely across portions of the northwest Bahamas. Sunday, partly sunny with well, partly cloudy with some sunny periods, warm and breezy with the chance of light stray showers during the day, turning mostly part, turning partly cloudy and a bit breezy and mild at night with a stray shower or two possible. That's your morning blend weather check brought to you by Easy Car Sales. Are you shopping for a new car? Well, before you decide, compare. Easy Car Sales invites you to try an electric vehicle. Take a test drive. You'll love the smooth, powerful ride and the big savings. Dump the pump and drive electric. You will never go back to gas. Drop into Easy Car Sales on Gladstone Road or visit easy242.com to find out more. Ready! On May 4th and 5th, athletes from around the world will compete to secure their spot in the Paris Olympics. Come, witness history as our Bahamian athletes run against the world, chase the sun from paradise to Paris at the BBC World Athletic Relays here in Nassau, Bahamas at the Thomas A. Robinson National Stadium. Get your tickets now at worldrelaysbahamas24.org or at the Andre Rogers Baseball Stadium box office or at BTC Mall at Marathon or BTC Southwest Plaza. BTC World Relays. Be there. Maybe it's time to explore your options. There's no harm in reviewing your mortgage arrangement and considering a better deal. CIBC Caribbean can help you narrow your search and decide. Switch your mortgage to CIBC Caribbean and enjoy a special interest rate and help towards your switching cost. Visit CIBCFCIB.com forward slash inspired home for more information. Conditions apply. In the world of business, technology is not a choice. It's a necessity. And for businesses that demand excellence, there's only one choice for unparalleled support and cutting edge technology. Custom computers. You have challenges and we have solutions. Computing, networking, storage and printing for enterprises large and small aligned with premium brands like HP, Microsoft, Konica Minolta and more. Get tech done the right way with custom computers. Call the know-how team at 396-1101. In 2023, over 9 million visitors came to the Bahamas. This year, we plan on shattering that record. That's why tourism is everyone's business. Paradise is not only found in Nassau, but throughout our 16 island destination. No matter who you are or what you do, we all have a part to play in our tourism industry. This is our country. These are our islands. This is our home. That's why tourism is everyone's business. This is Guardian Radio 96.9 FM, Nassau, Bahamas.
Welcome back to Morning Blend here on Guardian Radio 96.9. We are streaming live on GuardianTalkRadio.com and on the Guardian Radio app for smart devices. We're also on your televisions on cable, Bahamas Channel 969, and BTC Flow Channel 612. You can tweet us at Morning Blend 969 or Facebook.com slash Morning Blend 969. Text us on the Guardian Radio text line powered by BTC 4224796. Standard text rate supply. And now at 8.25, time for another check of your weather for today. Brought to you by Sherwin-Williams Paints. We've got troughing and associated moisture that's going to contribute to showers and possible convective activity across the southeast Bahamas, as well as portions of the central islands. Meanwhile, the northwest Bahamas will enjoy mostly pleasant conditions, but increasingly breezy due to a tightening pressure gradient over the islands. Small craft operators in the southeast Bahamas should avoid entering Atlantic waters, especially if you're inexperienced. And there's a moderate risk of rip currents along Atlantic exposed coastlines. So your forecast for today for the northwest Bahamas is partly mostly sunny, warm, and uh, slightly breezy, becoming mostly fair, comfortable, and a bit breezy tonight with a slight chance of a stray shower. For the central and southeast Bahamas, partly cloudy to occasionally cloudy, warm, and breezy with isolated showers and the chance of offshore thunderstorms through tonight. Temperatures getting up into the 80s, around 81 Fahrenheit, 27 Celsius for highs. Lows tonight getting down about 68 Fahrenheit, 20 Celsius. In your extended outlook, troughing near the southeastern isles will shift eastwards and away from the area, while a frontal boundary will linger behind, supporting some light to moderate shower activity across the extreme southeastern islands, including the Turks and Caicos Islands. Meanwhile, a light uh, and that tight pressure gradient will promote very breezy and rough marine conditions for all areas throughout the weekend as a robust high-pressure system shifts closer to the area. So for tomorrow, Saturday, expect a mix of sun and clouds in the northwest and central Bahamas, along with warm and windy conditions turning partly cloudy, a bit breezy, and mild at night. Light stray showers likely across portions of the northwest Bahamas. Sunday, partly cloudy with sunny periods, warm and breezy with a chance of light, stray showers during the day, turning partly cloudy, a bit breezy and mild at night with a, stray, with a chance of stray showers. That's your morning blend weather check brought to you by Sherwin-Williams Paints. Sherwin-Williams Paints has got you covered for all of your painting and equipment needs. Visit Sherwin-Williams Paints online or in store today. And time for another check of your traffic for this morning, brought to you by RBC, a bank for all of us. And just a reminder of the work that's scheduled to begin tonight on Bay Street. The Ministry of Works will begin the new Providence drainage culvert rehabilitation on Bay Street between Elizabeth Avenue and Christie Street. And so as of 7 o'clock this evening through Sunday, the section of Bay Street between Colbrook Lane and DeVoe Street will be closed to the motoring public for that duration of the works. And so traffic is going to be diverted from Bay Street onto Colbrook Lane, Dowswell Street, east to Christie Street. You're urged to follow the posted signs and exercise caution and maybe avoid the area if you can. But that's going to begin tonight at 7 o'clock. In your real-time traffic right now, we are seeing, as usual, heavy traffic on Mile Butler Highway, just north of the Fire Trail Roundabout to Tony Gloom's Darling Highway and traffic is backed up along Tony Gloom's Darling Highway especially eastbound toward that roundabout and then further up we've got uh, the six leg around but that's going to be uh, quite a stretch there along the Milo Butler Highway side if you're heading northbound you're going to see traffic even at the uh, roundabout with Sports Center Road straight through to the six leg at, at JFK Drive New Providence Highway Farrington Road and uh, Thompson Boulevard. So you're going to uh, have issues on a multiple, a number of the legs, northbound, southbound on your province highway, eastbound on JFK, and um, even uh, westbound there on uh, Thompson Boulevard. 
over in Glass Road is busy as well from uh, just from the Glass Road side northbound straight up to the roundabout with JFK Drive and Bomber Boulevard. And we've got uh, Robinson Road still busy for you at the intersection of Soldier Road and Eastern Road, just east of Fox Hill to about John Troy, if you're heading westbound. That's what we're looking at in your real-time traffic. That's your Morning Blend Traffic Alert, brought to you by RBC. Learn more at rbc.com slash Caribbean slash all of you. And we are back with Morning Blend on Guardian Radio 96.9. Dwight Strawn along with Chester Robarts. Coming up in just a few minutes, we're going to be talking with Reach Bahamas about autism in the Bahamas. It is Autism Awareness Month. We're going to get to that in just a bit. Just want to read a few of your messages and get to one other issue in the news. Um, uh, so we've been talking about uh, the FNM, which is going to convention June 1st. Um, this interesting text ca- came in. Um, uh, Dwight, it's people like you in the media who are doing wrong in this country. I listen to you every morning. Why are you laughing when the name of the COI is called? It's wrong. That is why the Bahamas is the way it is. Every morning when I turn the radio, the, uh, the airwaves are filled with Creole. Shame on you. Why was that last part necessary? The Creole part? Yeah. Where are they hearing Creole? Every morning, I don't know, but anyway, it's interesting. Well, yeah, blame me. It's me. Um, what's wrong with the country? Um, will the winner of the FNM bring real local government to the island of Providence? <laughs> 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 jokes. Everybody's giving jokes this morning. Um, I don't think you'll, hear, you'll get this from any of these two parties. Well, yeah, the, the COI is much more likely to bring it than any of these two. Um, and then, hmm. um, I will support that person. I took a few days off from work. I realized many of the problems that are on this island would be best dealt with by local government and not national government. Look at cities like London and Toronto. I think you could look at almost any city in the world and you'll see. But we, somebody likes it like this. Somebody likes it like this. As a Bahamian in survival mode for the last 30 years, um, w- I will never again vote for the PLP or FNM. They haven't done anything progressive for this country except sell our souls away to foreigners and get rich. <laughs> They're like the WWE fake actors. Well, that's an interesting wow. interesting comparison there. Yeah. Hmm. That's a good one, though. <laughs> Picturing it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Who are they putting the smack down on? Mm-hmm. Mm. Um, seriously, Dwight, I know you don't want to talk about COVID, but has the media looked into how our medical community was so easily misled by COVID misinformation? Well, I know that you're pushing it now. Let's, no. They were doing what they thought was for the best. They didn't want a situation like we saw with the Spanish flu, um, yeah. right? Uh, if we hadn't done that, people would have laughed. At us in the future as well. That you have to take that into consideration. Well, like you know, more um, people might have died, and more people might have died, right? But they said, oh, they were just doing everything like normal while this pandemic was raging. That would that wouldn't have so been that wouldn't have been a good look. People who were really sick, and the ones who died. What about them? Mm. Well, hmm. This person says here, um, there was one good text about menace. <laughs> One. Let's see if I can like find a flattering it. duck. Mm-hmm. When you say good, yeah. Okay. Um, I can't find it, but it was saying how you know he did well despite the challenges. Oh, didn't you read? Did that? I read that one? Yeah. Oh, it was so striking. Yeah. I probably tried to block it out. Um, Doctor Minnis is why we are here today. Where is that? He is the reason why so many F and M stayed home and did not vote. He has lost the confidence of the Bahamian people, so he needs to stop being a sore loser and support Mister Pintard. Having had a personal encounter with him, oh boy, I can't read the rest of this. <clears throat> wow, this is not this is not nice. Okay, um, on another note, what's this? Wait, 
Minas has a set has a different skill set in that he is a strong administrator and a proven wealth creator. Recall many detractors do not want Minas to buy uh, the Grand Lucaya uh, or buy Grand Bahama International Airport, but it was the right thing to do. Mm-hmm. Okay. Minas will always do the right thing, and that is what our country needs. On another note, how does your co-host feel about school administrators and resource officers being armed with tasers? And you don't want to know what I think about it? Anyway, um, from my own experience, as we get closer to the end of the school year, um, this is the time when scores are settled between students and there are a lot more fights. Armed with tasers? Our police don't even have tasers. Mm. We, I, but can we know, even have tasers? They want to know what you think. <clears throat> I would love to have a taser. What no? What, what no? Um, somebody, how about the parents? Some of these wild children need to be tased. How about the parents recognize because this, this was always like this from the time I was in school, right? The end of the school year is chaos, um, right? Things pop off, as people say. Um, the parents try to deal with their kids and say, Hey, if I even smell, think that you are going to be causing problems in this school, we're gonna have big issues. Why would they do that? Some of them causing problems in, in the streets. Well, Anyway, um, if, if how about that as opposed to arming people with tasers to deal with the children who don't need to be acting like this? People could just say, you're not going to do it. Not you. And, and you know, we're not threatening violence. We're just saying, hey, well, you, this won't be a pleasant summer I'll tell because you, I'll take away your phone and all your little games that, and everything. Video, all and that, you go into summer camp and Bible camp and everything all summer long. All that whapping that was happen, happening with a piece of stick wasn't it? Wasn't phasing that person at all. Here on the show, I said the guy was using his Harry Potter wand to cast out a spell or something, I guess. When people in the middle of a fight, they don't feel there's certain things. I've seen it before at a regatta. So, the police beating somebody with a cane. While they was fighting, and they didn't stop. Did you see the off- the picture of the officer? He's in a cast. His arm is indeed yeah, broken. Yeah. My God, let's take these calls really quickly. We've got to move on. Good morning, call you on the air. Hi, are you there? No. Yes. Good morning, call you on the air. Yes. Good morning to both of you. Hi. Good morning. I am wondering if you need Parliament to um, pass some law so that the text messages <clears throat> you are unable to completely read. You can post them somewhere. <laughs> Seriously, because no. you know we get this often. Whatever platform that is, will be sued. So it's it's that bad. It, it, yeah, you but can't, it really? Yeah, it's it's and then it can't be verified. And these are serious claims. Um, oh, that person texted about a, a, an incident they had with with Menace and was getting into stuff. I'm like, I, I don't want to read this. But I, I mean, you could use pseudonyms. You know, you can actually use replacement names and have let us figure it out. <laughs> Come yeah. on, Dwight, man. We well, kind of like we'll let an AI do that on another show. How about yeah, that? Yeah. I'm well, not going to get mixed yeah, up in okay, it. Okay, but, you know, I just thought I'd mention They'll come for me. Here. Trust me. You, know, you decided to read. That was so thinly veiled, we knew exactly what you were talking about. <laughs> mm-hmm. You didn't even try to. Right. No, no, no. That's okay. All right. I'm sorry. I just thought I should mention it to you because mm-hmm. I really would like to, to, to hear something. Tell these people to call in and get themselves into trouble. Okay. Um, no, even us, we will still get in trouble if we do mm-hmm. that. Thank you very much, though. Um, I'm sure. Well, maybe we'll do a play a pay per view platform. You pay us, and we'll donate the money to charities, <laughs> to, to, wow. to people's legal defenses. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> our own. Oh, you're right. Our, our own. Um, one final call. We got to go. Good morning, call you on the air. No. Okay. Uh, it says uh, more people texting about it. Like, why don't you post these uh, text messages somewhere so we can see them? Hmm. I don't think you all understand how people text us in the morning. It's uh, people are hurting, people are in pain, clearly, um, and they just unleash it you know, on our text line. But hey, we're going to change gears when we get back. This is Morning Blend on Guardian Radio 96.9. Stay with us. Every time the phone rings, I hope that it's you on the other side. I wanna tell you everything, everything that's on my mind. And I don't want any other guys taking my place, girl. I got too much pride. I know I may be wrong, but I don't wanna be right. Cause your lips were made for mine, and my heart would go flatline if it wasn't beating for me. 
Don't the shop at Sherwin Williams then. Don't get the best service in the Bahamas then. The love is really, really strong in Sherwin Williams. We don't just sell paint. We service you with a smile, good heart, mm-hmm. mind, mm-hmm. soul, and body. Mm-hmm. And me. we love our customers as much as we love ourselves. ourselves. Yes. For real, real talk. I'm not just saying this real talk. to impress myself. We love to go beyond the customer service. So if they feel delighted to come in Trevor Williams because they know I can either see Dee Dee, or I can see Shelly, or one of our other wonderful staff members. We treat our customers with the respect of our boss because there are many paint companies they can choose to go to. No, baby. If they go to some other paint companies, so oh, I ain't gonna get this little thing at the end of the week. We want to make sure you get that little ting, Shelly. Come visit Shelly and Dee Dee at Sherwin Williams Bahamas, and you'll surely find color in every day. Are you a business owner or HR professional? RF's team of pension specialists are here to empower your employees with market-leading retirement solutions and to make implementing group pensions easy and cost-effective. With RF, starting or switching your company pension plan is a breeze, and there are no setup fees. If you're looking for strong investment performance and low fees, visit rfgroup.com empower and empower your team to retire comfortably with RF Group Pensions today. That's rfgroup.com empower. You've heard of electric cars. Now it's time you drive one. Easy Car Sales welcomes you to experience the power and prestige of the latest electric vehicles. Plug in at home for a 65% discount off your gas bill and never get stuck at the pump again. Build your dreams of a better future with a better car. BYD EV. Visit easy242.com to book your free test drive today. Save your money while driving in style. Only at Easy Car Sales. In 2023, over 9 million visitors came to the Bahamas. This year, we plan on shattering that record. That's why tourism is everyone's business. Paradise is not only found in Nassau, but throughout our 16 island destination. No matter who you are or what you do, we all have a part to play in our tourism industry. This is our country. These are our islands. This is our home. That's why tourism is everyone's business. Tired of banks forcing you to use technology to bank the way they want you to? Your convenience is important. So no matter what your banking needs, Commonwealth Bank's friendly staff are always available in branch for that personal one-on-one service. But when you choose technology, our online and mobile banking app offers you state-of-the-art functionality. The choice is yours. Commonwealth Bank. Bank the way you want. Earning zero interest on your savings at the bank? With as little as $100, you can start earning interest on your money while you're sleeping, eating, or standing in line at the bank with the Seafeld Savings Express Plan. Ready to invest? Start by putting $1,000 into our mutual funds and earn interest there too. Because at Seafeld, your interest is our interest. Visit Seafeld.com to start now. Seafeld, growing wealth for future generations of Bahamians. what boss man was saying in the back there just now about what the luncheon why are you always worried about food no but how we gotta pay a little more for national insurance mildred you talking fool i can't afford to pay that and you always cry and pour them out it ain't gonna be much boss still gotta pay voice of july 2024 i think that terminal benefit is what did help my boy tony mm-hmm. through the pandemic that same unemployment benefit. And guess what? What? Susan, <laughs> I think she'd get a pregnancy benefit, eh? You mean maternity benefit, eh? So now, we gotta do our part to make sure we get our pension. All right. For more information, visit nibrateincrease.com. This is Guardian Radio 96.9 FM, Nassau, Bahamas. Tears up in your eyes Come on and come to me now Don't be ashamed to cry Let me see you through Cause I've seen the dark side too When the night falls 
Welcome back to Morning Blend here on Guardian Radio 96.9. Dwight Strawn, along with Chester Robards. And this morning, we are talking about autism in the Bahamas. It is Autism Awareness Month, and we're very pleased to have uh, representatives from Reach Bahamas with us this morning. We've got a pediatrician and board member, Dr. Deshaun Saunders. And we've got parent, Alvin Hepburn Sr. Great to have you with us. Great that we finally get to have this conversation. Welcome. Thank you Thank for you. having us. All right, so um, let's talk about it. Um, autism awareness, we're almost at the end of the month, but um, how are we looking now? Do we have numbers on, uh, on, uh, on the, the frequency, the, how, often, how many people are affected with autism here? Um, we know we've been talking about the lack of it for a number of years now, but are we getting any closer to getting a true understanding of what's going on? So we are in the process of getting a better understanding. We don't have our exact numbers as yet. Mm -hmm. We, as an organization, we actually started a drive where we're, we're trying to collect information from our parents so we can get our numbers, but we are actually about to go into research to make the determination on what our exact numbers are. Now, when we look at the U.S., um, right now the numbers are increasing. It's one in 36 um, children that have been diagnosed um, with autism, and that's our 2022 statistics. That's increasing from what? That's increasing. In 2018, it was 1 in 41. Oh, in 1990, boy. it was 1 in 10,000. All wow. right, so you can see that the numbers have tripled and doubled. And in the last two years, we've actually seen a 15% increase in our persons that are presenting. And what's startling also, and we're not sure, when we look at our U.S. numbers, of course, autism affects all ethnicities, including the white, including our black population, Hispanics. But they're seeing that there is actually an increasing rise in the black and Hispanic population. Mm -hmm. And so that's pretty concerning. So we don't know what exactly, where there's air pollution, where there's something in the water, where there's something in the food. Mm -hmm. But obviously... Air pollution, like that could be a thing? It's possible. Mm -hmm. we, don't, we don't know what wow. we're being exposed to. And mm -hmm. so... You know, our numbers are rising, and we really need to get to the bottom of it, of, of what's happening with why we're having all of these kids with delay. And from what you see, um, you think that's what's happening here, too? You think yes. it's rising here? Yes, our numbers are rising here, also in the Bahamas. You know, a lot of persons are blaming COVID, the COVID effect. Mm -hmm. um, they're fe they felt that because children were locked up in the house with their parents um, for about almost a year and a half to two, that... Um, increased the numbers, but I, I choose to disagree. I just feel that it exposed the numbers, meaning that a lot of parents are working. So, of course, in the morning, they drop the kids off to the nursery at 8 a.m. They pick up the kid at 5. Um, they're tired. The kid goes to bed. And so mm -hmm. they did not have a chance to observe their kids over the years. And so not until a kid was, t in, t in terms of going to primary schools so around the age of 5, then, you know, you're noting that, hold on, this kid is delayed. This kid's not right. talking not having behaviors, but COVID exposed it because children were now home with their parents. Mm -hmm. So they were now able to observe them. They were now able to notice that, hey, Johnny's not talking. And, you know, parents felt that because they were not in schools. I once again disagree with that. As I explained to them, back in the day, we didn't have preschools. You know, we grew up in the homes with our grandmas mm -hmm. playing in the yard. And our kids still progressed. Mm -hmm. And so, and, you know, and also during COVID, parents were home talking, you're on the phone, you were watching mm -hmm. television, and so language was happening. And so it just, because of the exposure, you now were able to realize that, hey, we have an increased number. And then also talk shows like this, forums, we're able to now have public awareness so persons are able to understand what autism is, what are the mm -hmm. signs and symptoms. Mm -hmm. And so all of that is also added to the increase. Yeah. Are, are other countries around the world having a similar increase? Dramatic increase? Yes. So it's something that we're seeing worldwide. Yes. Oh, okay. So it's not just isolated to the Bahamas. Mm -hmm. right, yeah. Wow. Wow. Alvin Hepburn, uh, tell us your story. Um, uh, w w give us your experience, what's been happening with you and your family. Okay. Well, um, my wife and I, we, we are both educators. And uh, when we had our first child, we, we realized that um, he was not developing as we were taught that the childhood development should happen. Mm -hmm. But it, 
it wasn't until we had our second child that we, we saw how quickly she was developing that we realized, oh, okay, that there is an issue. Mm -hmm. So we uh, went to get um, AJ tested at the um, special unit through the Ministry of Education. And it was there that we were told that he was on the spectrum. And, um, how old was he at this point? He was four years old. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, we were told that he was on the spectrum and he was high functioning. Um, I've told this story be, before, and I, I guess I can share it again. When I found out that my son was autistic, I sat and I cried. I didn't cry because he was autistic. I cried because he was autistic in the Bahamas. Oh, boy. Um, Explain that. What do, what do you mean? Be, because of our culture, um, when people... Um, are different, we tend to uh, shame them, isolate them, ostracize them. Um, it wasn't until I went to the States that I realized that, oh, it, um, people are handicapped. Like, it, it seemed like we hide our children who, who are disabled in this society. Like, mm -hmm. like there's some shame in, in taking them out in public. We only take them out when we have to. But we, we, you rarely would see um, a child in a wheelchair um, going out with the parent and all of that type stuff. We let them stay at home. Mm -hmm. So with all of that, and my wife and I, not too long, relocating from, from uh, America, we were like, boy, do we need now to go back? Because the infrastructure to deal with autistic children was very minute at the time. Mm -hmm. But we thank God for REACH. Um, and, and REACH helped us to navigate through um, those difficult times. And AJ started talking really at three, four, was when he really started putting sentences together. Mm -hmm. um, but if you look at him, you would say, oh, that's a normal child. Right. Well, let me take that back. My child is normal, mm -hmm. <laughs> just that he processed differently, mm -hmm. and 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 that's why um, I am so happy for Reach because Reach is sharing this awareness to get the Bahamas open to the fact that listen, there is a different group of people that process differently, so we need to accept them. And deal with them. My 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 wife. We were around some family members, and and my son struggled to write. And they they would say to her, um, "Let him do more writing exercise. Let him do more writing exercise, and I'll better him." Mm. And she she likes to use this this analogy. She she says, "Well, would you say to a blind person?" show them more seeing exercises, mm. and then they'll be able to see. No, that doesn't make sense. What you do is you said, okay, this is a limitation. Let us now develop techniques to help them over this limitation. Yeah. How so, old is AJ now? AJ is now 10. Oh, wow. Okay. And he's doing very well. Um, he's, he's in a... Stand well, I, I want to say normal, but I don't want to say normal. School, mm -hmm. and he's functioning very well. Mm -hmm. Mind you, uh, we, we, we have to be up with him late at night to make sure that he understands because he, the process is different, mm -hmm. but we are doing what we have to do to make sure our son gets all that yeah. he needs. Well, well, what, what, are, what are some of those things that he likes or does well or enjoys doing? AJ... I say he's brilliant. Yeah. Um, loves math, um, loves reading, um, loves playing his games. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he loves climbing trees, just like every normal child. Yeah. He, he does all of that stuff, but you have to take extra time with him. Mm -hmm. And whereas you could say to, uh, to somebody, go get that phone, you may have to point and help him and carry him and say, AJ, this is a phone. And now 
go get that phone. Mm-hmm. So you have to do those extra steps. You have to be extra patient with him. Uh, but once he understands, he's a high flyer. Yeah. Let's talk some more about that, the, the spectrum, what yeah. that means, and high functioning. And Dr. Mm-hmm. Saunders, I guess you can uh, tell us a little more about that as well. But, um, but Alvin, you could explain what you, you're seeing. Um, you talked about already about uh, what he loves. But w- high functioning, what, what that means in terms of the spectrum and autism discussion. Okay, so that's a good question. So when we look at autism, autism has different levels. Okay, so you have level one to level three. And when we talk about kids that are high functioning, in the past it was something called Asperger's. And so with Asperger's, um, those kids... In the past, we don't say that anymore? No, so everybody goes under the umbrella of autism now. Oh, wow. Yeah, so they actually stopped the differentiation. When did they stop that? They stopped that at least about 10 years ago. Yeah, so so a lot of persons still still use the term, but it's no longer uh, a definition. So everybody falls under autism, and you're just now divided into levels. And so kids with... Level one, they're usually mild. So when they when we talk about high functioning, it means that these kids are very brilliant. They're smart. They're great in math. They're great in reading. However, they have social deficits. So mm-hmm. they may not be able to make friends. They may not be able to understand a joke. They don't understand sarcasm. You know, and so those are sometimes the, the difficulties. Also, sometimes in terms of their sensory, they may be hypersensitive to noises. So mm-hmm. even though they're functioning, they can read, they can write, they can talk, but if they hear loud noises, they cover their ears or they may have food sensitivities. And so, so that's the difference. And so as you look at the different levels, it means the impact of the impairment, whether it's through communication. So level two, level three, they have moderate, so they may not be able to um, speak or if they do, they may have echolalia or that may be delayed. Also, in terms of some of their behaviors, so they may have increased behaviors, whether it's things like hand flapping or toe walking or spinning. And then when we look at their socialization. Toe walking is the tiptoe. Tiptoeing, right. Mm -hmm. So some kids, so we call it intermittent toe walking. And so some kids walk Mm -hmm. flat-footed. When they get excited, they may get up on their toes and start to walk or run on their toes. And then also when you look at their socialization, in terms of making friends, preferring to be a loner, um, those would be the areas that we look at. And so when you look at autism, in general, it affects three main areas, whether that's social, whether that's communication, whether that's behavioral, mm-hmm. and just based on how the child presents, we're able to um, differentiate what leveling they are at. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Now that, yeah. Now that's different from ADD, right? Some, so, yes, it is. So, so, so you talk about ADD, so just to explain it, ADD or ADHD is attention mm-hmm. deficit hyperactive disorder. Interestingly, when you look at autism, it holds hands with other disorders. Mm-hmm. And ADHD is actually one of the comorbid illnesses that a kid with autism can have. The difference with ADHD, though, is that they're hyperactive, they're busy. We describe them as being a nonstop car. And so they're just on the go. They're not able to sit still in class. They have a very short attention span. They may forget their homework, forget their books. Um, and, you know, and so it affects their learning capacity because if a kid is not able to sit still long enough to, to take in the information or a kid has a short attention span, then they may become very forgetful. And so they are different, but some kids can have both, both okay. autism and ADHD or you, ADHD itself. Do you think some people are getting misdiagnosed with both of those? Or is that what's happening? So, so I would say this. Um, so ADHD, you that actually you see it more um, for kids above the age of five. And so as kids are now in the school setting, mm-hmm. you're now noticing that they can't sit still in school. They're not able to finish their work. And so, yes, I agree. You have a lot of misdiagnosis because you have a lot of kids that are having poor school performance. Right and learning difficulties, and it could be just because of that. Um, ADHD, in terms of persons not understanding the process, so a child may not necessarily have autism. Yeah. Um, you can have ADHD separate and apart. Yeah. Yes, so I agree that we have a lot of missed persons. We even have missed adults um, that likely mm-hmm. you know, may have autism or even uh, a combination of both. Yeah. Yes. Well, all right, so AJ's getting close to the teenage years. Oh. Um, um, <laughs> any concerns about what that will bring, and, and even adulthood? What, what, what are you thinking? What? Well, my wife and I, we pray over him every night <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> just to make sure that the Holy Spirit covers him and and uh, keeps him, but like Dr. Sanders was 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 saying, he is still having issues looking people in the face to mm-hmm. talk with them, mm-hmm. and um, when it comes to conversations uh, with him, it is black or white, right or wrong. Inferences is very hard 
for him to um, understand. So even in the school system now, uh, comprehension is one of his weakest areas. But when you give him a spelling test, 100%. Oh, wow. Um, well, there's a lot of company with the comprehension old, yeah. issue here, though. So <laughs> <laughs> I don't think he has to be too concerned. <laughs> My 10-year-old um, is smarter than me when it comes to spelling. Okay. Uh, he's just brilliant. Um, once, and when I'm helping him with his math, his mother or I, when we're helping him with his math, and, and he finally understands, he says, I'm okay now. I, <laughs> I could do this. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, and then he goes and he just answers everything. And I'm like, wow. And it reminds me of, I tried for over a year. I bought him a bike and I tried to get him to ride that bike. And it frustrated me. Like, I had the bike. I said, let's go, let's go. And then he just get up and go in, inside the house. And I'm like, ah, when is this boy? Ever? Daddy's trying to get his son to ride this bike. And i mm -hmm. sitting him on the bike and moving his leg. And I'm like, you can do this, you can do this. And one day I came home from work, from work and, and my wife said to me, Alvin, watch this. <laughs> so she said, AJ, we're in our front room, get the bike. And he jumps on the bike and starts riding. Oh, I'm wow. like, when did you learn to do this? <laughs> because that's how it is with him. You, you, you have to show him, but then when he's ready, he right. gets up and, say, mm. and he does it, and he does it so well. Wow. Mm. Wow. That is amazing. Yes, that is amazing. Yes. So yeah. for other parents who are, are struggling, or are frustrated, um, how can reach help, um, and what advice would you give them? So as um, REACH is a, a non-governmental organization, so we're a parent support group along with other professionals, and we have monthly parent support group meetings, so parents can call in. We have a vibrant office that's open Monday to Friday where we have support staff on board, mm -hmm. and so they can call and get further information. We have a speech therapist that's on board it um, with our unit. And we do speech therapy services free of charge. Of course, there's a waiting list mm. um, because, you know, not to say free is, is busy, but <laughs> there is a shortage in general of speech therapists in the Bahamas. And not only that cost, it's also a prohibitive factor for a lot of our parents. But REACH is an organization. We are here for our parents and for our children. Mm -hmm. We also offer summer camps where we're able to offer services free of charge whether that's through speech therapy, whether that's through behavioral therapy. We also bring in special education teachers along with behavioral therapists, so parents who may not have been exposed to what therapy looks like for a kid that's delayed, they're able to get services um, during the summer, and so it's something that we offer. Okay. I know it's almost the end of April, but any events still happening? And what have we missed so far? <laughs> yes. So, yes, I'm glad that you have us here. We actually have a fun run walk tomorrow. Oh, wow. Okay. Yes, and so we're asking persons to please reach out to our office, 328-4123. It's not too late to sign up. And so our fun run walk starts tomorrow morning at 6 a.m. And we're looking forward. It comes with a free T-shirt. And we're looking forward to support, support, support. In addition, we have our raffle that will also be likely drawn tomorrow. You can reach out to our office also. We have tickets on sale as $3, and we have great prizes. And so we all this. these are some of the things that we do to raise funds mm -hmm. just so we can help with our camps. As you know, we're an NGO. We have some assistance from the government, but and that helps us to pay the speech therapist. Um, but we always need funds. Nothing is free. Mm -hmm. And so even though we offer our services for free to our families, we still need donations. And so we use um, activities, for instance, the Fun Run Walk. We would have had lighted up blue. That would have passed, and that's our celebratory event where we look at autism around the world and we're able to celebrate and honor our children who are doing well and not not just doing well but just to honor all of our kids right. you know just to um, make them feel a part make them feel unique and important that hey we have a day set aside just to honor we do have support if you look around um, there are some of the buildings that light up blue at night so Kalina mm -hmm. along with Rubis and other corporate organizations are also supporting us. But please, our fun run walk is tomorrow. And so I have to emphasize this. As you know, it's our last month. It's T-shirts. Mm -hmm. We also have T-shirts available for sale. And all of these are ways that we are able to raise funds. And so we're wearing T-shirts today. So yeah, please. Nice. Mm -hmm. um, of course, most of the corporate organizations had it every Friday in terms of T-shirt day. But it's still not too late to get T-shirts. We still have T-shirts available. Mm -hmm. But our main thrust is tomorrow morning, a fun run walk. What's the route for that tomorrow? So our route um, for our fun run walk tomorrow, so we start 
at Monica Beach, and then we'll be traveling west onto Shirley Street, north onto Church Street, um, to, to Sydney Poitier Bridge, east along Paradise Island Bridge, and back south on East Bay Street, and then we end at Montague Beach for okay. sure. And it starts at 6 a.m., and so it's not too late to sign up. If you're not able to reach out to our office, you can come a little early, so around maybe 5.30. We'll have persons there also to sign up, and so we look forward to our annual Fun Run Walk. And so we ask everybody to come out and support REACH Excellent. as we continue to help our community and our families. How much to be in the, in the walk? So the walk, the registration is thirty dollars, and that includes a T-shirt. Okay, let's take this call really quickly um, before we wrap up. Uh, good morning, call. You're on the air. Turn on your radio for us, please. Good morning, Mr. Strong. Good morning, to your guest. Hi, good morning. Yes, sir, uh, Mr. Strong. One of these days, um, we're going to have to publicly state ourselves. You know, maybe society doesn't have our best interests at hand. You know, maybe some of the things that they say are for our best interests are not because they want to give you all kind of vaccinations for your health and stuff like that. But when you're young, when you're born, right? But they allow you to eat all kind of junk and all kind of foolishness when you get older. So, I mean, do they really care about your health? But, I mean, but I just kind of tuned and I heard the lady talking about um, where the possible causes of autism may have come from. I mean, I heard her talk, call a few things, but I didn't hear her talk about the vaccines, right? Because what we need to do is we need to take a look at ourselves and say, but what are we doing now that we never used to do so much of in the past? Because I'm trying to figure out how the people... Um, like hundreds of years ago, how, how they even used to live without vaccines, you know what I mean, since they're so important. Well, they, they died by the time they were 40. Well, okay, but, but so, the thing about it is this. When, when I was younger, compared to with the children um, nowadays, they, they probably get like 10 times more shots than I used to get when I was a child. And another, and another thing that's odd is um, throughout history, right, throughout history, the most sickly race of the races is the white race. But yet still in modern times, right, when we see people being plagued with diseases, it, it's the black and brown people who top on the list. I mean, I, I, I find that to be something that is very, very, um, very uh, suspicious, you know what I mean? Because maybe we could just be targeted because, and I'm, I'm going to end on this. What I, like me, I'm one of those who have that conspiracy so-called theorist mind, right? And whenever I hear them talk about statistics and data, like when they talk about one in this, one in that, two in that, I believe that they're able to do that because they know exactly how many, vo- how many vaccines they poison? They poison one out of, the, one out of this hundred batch, two out of the hundred mm. batch. Oh, but like I say before, what we need to do is we need to ask ourselves if the powers that be really have our interests at heart. And we cannot be afraid to question certain things because nowadays it seems as if it's wrong to even question the fact or entertain the idea that vaccines could be the cause when that's the one thing that people get more of nowadays. Thank you very much. And, you're right. and I'm glad to see that you're all making efforts to try and um, deal with the situation I'd be faced with. Thank you very much. I love a nice day. Hmm. Okay, interesting. Uh, Dr. Saunders, uh, yeah, you I just have need a lot to, to say Yeah, to I just that, need to I'm respond sure. to that. So, so just for the call, our vaccines. We have kids that have never been vaccinated and still have autism, so I need you to explain mm-hmm. that for me. Okay, and so... And the majority of people who are vaccinated right. don't have... Don't have autism. autism. And so I've had families, I actually had a family where their son developed autism and the family was convinced that it was the vaccines that caused it. And so they did not vaccinate their other children and and their children are also autistic. And so that in itself tells you it's obviously something else, okay? Mm -hmm. Um, So we have stories upon stories where persons have refused vaccinations. And I'm sure if you read the literature and you look into media, it's, it's clear and they still have autism. So and Even we're the, better at recognizing the signs exactly. now, right? We don't know if people we, recognized exactly. it 100 years so ago, So back in the day, everybody ago. was mental retardation right. or intellectual exactly. disability. Exactly. You know, persons would lock everybody. their kids up in the house. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And of course, back then, we didn't have um, vaccinations either, and we still had persons who were delayed. Yeah. And so, you know, that theory is, is, is there, mm-hmm. but um, it's not being warranted. And so I definitely, as a, you know, as a professional, I always have to address it. Yeah. Vaccines do not cause autism. We do not have um, the reasoning at this time, and we have kids that are not vaccinated. So I'd like for you to explain that to us, um, definitely. And in terms of uh, the diseases that we're seeing in these populations, and, and, and it's and, lifestyles. And we're right. making these choices. Of course. We are eating these and, and would, things. Of course, and I'd say this, um, things like measles. For me as a clinician, I read measles in a book. 
And so now I have to know what measles looks like because mm-hmm. of persons not vaccinating anymore. We, we now have to see it walking in the door just because of all of these anti-factors. So diseases like polio and measles that we didn't see for 50 plus years, they're now raising their heads in the U.S. society. And even we've had some cases imported here in the Bahamas. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, yes, I understand um, the, the big concern with, with vaccines, but it, it helped. It helped. And as, as indicated, um, it has saved a lot of persons. But, you know, we really have to look at the broader picture when we um, have this conversation. Absolutely. Absolutely. All right, let's add on a positive note. Again, remind folks about how we can all help reach and spread the awareness about autism yes. um, with, the, with the Fun Run Walk tomorrow. Right. So as we wrap up our month, our last event is our Fun Run Walk tomorrow. And I'd be happy for everybody to come out and join us. And it's at 6 a.m. You can call our office at 328-4123 if you want to get your um, reservations in today. Or you can come and meet us at Montague Foreshore tomorrow morning. It starts at 6 a.m., so you'd have to come early. But we thank you for having us and allowing us to talk about autism awareness. As we know, every April we celebrate and we thank you for the support. And we look forward to everybody joining to continue reach as we continue to help our community. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you, Dr. Thank Saunders you. and Alvin Hepburn Sr. Thank you for sharing your story. Not Very no. inspiring story. Yeah. And yes. uh, we're rooting for AJ and all yes. the best. Um, keep up the great work that you're doing. Thank awesome you. awesome thank parents. You. Yes, yeah. they are. Yeah. Awesome. We're going to take a break for news and be back with Morning Blend Business. This is Morning Blend on Guardian Radio 96.9. Doctors Hospital has reimagined primary care. We have invested to improve our health system, ensuring that accessible, affordable, world-class clinical care is closer to you. We understand that your relationship with a primary care provider shapes the foundation of your overall health. Our new modern primary care facilities are where critical diagnoses and true personalized treatment begins. With locations across New Providence, Grand Bahama, and Exuma, we invite you to experience the Doctors Hospital difference. Book your next appointment at clinics.doctorshosp.com. RBC is a bit for all of you. Life is full of twists, turns, and defining moments that create your own unique story. However your story unfolds, we're here to help guide you through it. From every big decision to every new adventure, RBC is a bit for all of you. Visit rbc.com slash Caribbean slash all of you. This is Guardian Radio 96.9 FM, Nassau, Bahamas. Hosts and guests are their own and do not necessarily reflect the position of the management and staff of Guardian Network. Wake up, it's a new day. Wake up, it's a new day. Morning and welcome uh, to Morning Blend Business on this Friday, April 26th, 2024. Welcome back to our Morning Blend listeners. Once again, I'm Dwight Strawn along with Chester Robards. And this morning, uh, we are remembering John Beadle, the legendary artist who passed away earlier this month, April 16th, at the age of 60 years old. 
Uh, joining us this morning, we are very pleased to have uh, with us uh, the founding director of Turn Gallery, Amanda Colson, and the executive director of Arts and Culture Bahama Resort, John Cox, both are formerly with the National Art Gallery of the Bahamas, but great to have you with us again. It's been a while. Good morning to both of you. Good Thank morning. You. Great to be back. Uh, so this, this came as a shock to a lot of people. Um, uh, many of us did not know that he was um, battling cancer, um, but... Um, but just a, a devastating loss for the entire our community and for the country. Uh, let's talk about uh, John Beadle, for those who might not be familiar, and then we'll get into uh, those who do know of his wonderful work. Um, we'll get to that a bit later. But for those who might not be familiar uh, about, about the impact that he had right, on art right. in the country, let's talk about that. Yeah, so John, the, boy, there's a lot of ways to, to frame John Beadle, like uh, a lot of different ways. Um, he from the art perspective, uh, was a major, a major, major artist. He um, was a part of the kind of generation of artists that began to uh, uh, get their training overseas. Uh, he graduated from RISD, um, Rhode Island School of Design. Um, I think he had a degree in painting. I think he yeah. got his MFA from uh, Tyler. Tyler. Yeah. And uh, he was an amazing artist, a master thinker, one of the kind of considered to be one of the Bahamian master artists. Mm -hmm. um, a part of the Junkanoo community, um, worked very closely with Jackson Burnside, with one family Junkanoo group. I think he really touched on a lot of Junkanoo groups, um, really in his entire campaign. Mm -hmm. But I think for those of us in the art world, we kind of hailed him to be kind of, you know, people say there's an artist artist, you mm -hmm. know. Um, most people who are in a discipline, there's people in the discipline that recognize the true genius of that, that sometimes the outside world can't. Well, John epitomized that um, a hundredfold. Mm -hmm. I mean, this guy was yeah. was good. And I think what was so funny is that you call him an artist, artist. He never would call himself that wow. because he was. You know, I was talking to Stan Burnside the other day about it, and you know, I said he was so humble, and Stan's like, he wasn't humble. And I was like, yeah, that was so interesting about him. <laughs> so he was sort of like he knew his value, and he was kind of in a way biggity about his practice. But he was, in fact, so humble in the sense that he would. Um, you know, mentor anybody. If you were serious, mm -hmm. he would give you the time. If you weren't serious, he didn't have time yeah, for you. Yeah, he was. And he would never, like he often said, like, I don't want to call myself an artist because I don't want to put myself high above others. And it seems like artists sometimes think that about themselves. Mm -hmm. And he's like, everyone has, and I think that's the thing that I loved, everyone has the creative spark. Yeah. Everyone has creativity yeah. in them. I just had more training. Yeah, I you think know? he also, I think that's true of people who are, exceptional mm. you know they often transcend the trappings of ego right mm -hmm. you know right. so mm -hmm. he is so good that there was no need to kind of flaunt that or wear it mm. on your sleeve and he was rigorous he was he was you know you had to be serious if you mm -hmm. want to learn from john beetle it wasn't yeah. it wasn't yeah. like you know here's a lollipop go home and you know you know, say right. hello to mom. Right. Like yeah. it was, it and, was, and, and you'd walk away with some tough love lessons. Yeah, you, your mm -hmm. your practice would yeah. be changed. And as arts professionals, like when I that whole, you know, when we were at the NNGB together, we worked on a John Beadle solo show. And then I, you know, and the whole time I was there, you know, he was never someone who would blow smoke up that part of mm -hmm. your body that sometimes people do. And you know, he would, he kept you sharp. Yeah, you know, but he did it with so much respect. And sometimes people couldn't handle it because he was very honest. He was very raw. Mm -hmm. And he would tell you like he saw it, but he, you were always a better person for it. I want you all to talk, but I have a little John Beadle story. So uh, in a previous place, uh, Bahamas at Sunrise when I was there, um, I had to interview him. And he, at that time, he was, I guess, at the peak. I mean, everybody knew John Beadle. And I was so intimidated and nervous to go and interview him. I'm not an art scholar, so I don't know, right? But um, he was so accommodating, so kind, and it was like, this is amazing. And ever since then, every time we saw each other, we'd talk, he listened to the show, he'd tell me about it. Um, but uh, I, I think he's an enigma, because you, you do find him, people, I, he developed a reputation as being this I hard used, individual. I, I used that word in the, I, had, I wrote a little something for the, in memorial for him for the yeah. program, and I used that precise word because he was, because yeah. he was an enigma, because he was always both things. Yeah. He was a fine artist and a John Canoeur, even though they shouldn't be, d d you know, separated really in a way, mm -hmm. but and that's what he believed. He was, he was kind but hard. He right, was, exactly. You know, humble but bigoty. He was, he was yeah. all these things at once, and I think that's, and I think because of that, and because of how he was, and also how he's perceived, I, I personally feel like 
he isn't by the general public necessarily and even by some of the let's say quote unquote powers that be as recognized mm -hmm. as a as a as other folks we could name and nothing against them that everyone deserves it the people that have been recognized deserve a hundred percent that recognition but i feel like beetle's not the name that comes in the room when mm, everyone's yeah. like hey let's do an art thing yeah. like well, it's, it's not it's you know not, and, and i think that was a lost opportunity yeah. in you, a way yeah one couldn't like a status quo person couldn't access deeply mm -hmm. you know the kind of um qualities that he possessed mm -hmm. and like amanda's saying i completely agree there was this like dualistic kind of quality yeah. to him that he could be quite intimidating to right. people in, in a certain way just like intellectually creatively you're like mm -hmm. oh my god like I'm, what am i going to say am i going to make myself mm -hmm. sound silly um but he was completely open mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. and humble and and Generous. I like to, yeah, I like to refer to him uh, as somebody who is willing to play, you know, mm -hmm. creatively at the highest level. And that's really what you see in all of the, the best people throughout history. Mm -hmm. They there's a level of how they kind of transcend, you know, just the technical discipline of what they're in yeah. into a space where it kind of feels like it's effortless like in a way like we're just like you see it in movie directors and musicians and that kind of thing and you see these amazing performances and you see you know mm -hmm. prince and like everyone's like oh it, he came off the script and this wasn't supposed to happen right. but he just like owned yeah. the thing like that's how john he just like owned every moment of every piece of work that he made yeah. and um he demanded that type of excellence from people around him so if you were around him and you were making work you need to be excellent. Mm -hmm. you, know? you, you mentioned that you, you're not sure that people recognize the name as much as maybe, like you say, Amos Ferguson. People are like, oh, yeah. yeah. Um, but I feel like when I first heard his name, after that, I didn't stop hearing his name. Yeah, definitely. Mm -hmm. and, and he did a lot of things. He um, did a lot of things. Since the first time I, I heard his name. And I don't think I ever yeah. met him, but. Yeah. I always heard about it. No, but no. there was a moment, right, where he yeah, was, yeah. Yeah, that was all sure. you heard and seen. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I yeah. mean, I was young, slightly younger than him, maybe 10 years, just, yeah, 10 years younger-ish. Um, and he had gone to RISD right before I went to RISD. Mm -hmm. And he was like this, like, like an urban legend. Right. Like, oh, John Vila went to RISD and he did this and he did that. And, like, he said this thing about that thing. It was, he had that kind of, like, mystique mm -hmm. about him, mm -hmm. you know? Um, and in those days, that was like RISD era was when, like he was most intimidating. You know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then after that, it was like we became friends. It's like okay, right. well, I can relax around this guy. <laughs> you know, so everybody has a similar experience with yeah. Wow. Well, yeah. I mean, even my mom. My mom was like, oh man, that's a great loss for the country. Yeah. It is yeah. a major one. And, yeah. and you know, she was she was like, we used to hang out. She was like, I used to hang out with the young guys, like, with, the, with the young artists. And yeah. I was like, you? Yeah. 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 Let's talk about his work. Um, uh, describe it for us, and then we know he got into boats and uh, wow. boat building, yeah. and that's interesting yeah. as well. But let's talk a little bit about that. I, it's so hard to. I think that's what makes him also so interesting is that you know he started as a traditional painter and um, went to went to RISD for painting, but he he became you know an installation artist, a sculptor. You know mm -hmm. it, he brought all these different media in, which I think is something very true to the Bahamian experience in a way because like again you know when I would give tours or what I'd always say like painting is not is a European tradition it, that's where it was invented mm -hmm. what came from Africa was something very different and some a lot of these really you know what we're calling master artists or whatever blended those they blended these two kind of and that's what the Bahamian experience is too right we're African we're Anglo we're all the things and he just did that with such finesse and so he painted, but he hung things on the painting. The painting then became kind of 3D. He would take over yeah. whole spaces. Yeah, I think it was, it's, 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 um, it's sensory, right? Yeah. So there's a lot of like kind of 20th century artists who kind yeah. of deal with the idea, like he was about ideas, mm -hmm. right? And so you may start off in painting because it's a way of thinking about ideas and, or 2D, and managing, 2D. managing how yeah. to communicate these things. And then, he would just move outside of that. So he was like, like really interested in experimentation, mm -hmm. you know, as much as like, I just need to learn how to do this thing. And he would always say to me, he's like, you can't start anything from the position of an apology. You yeah. just need, you need to know that you can do anything and then start from there. And he was a metal worker. He was metal a worker, woodworker, woodworker yeah. painter, Everything. printmaker, uh, scientist, like had solar robots that he made. He would, buy toys 
and look at these toys and have them influence how we use design Junkanoo costumes. Wow. And, and he would say, like, I draw on wood. Yeah. And I paint on metal, but not not literally. Like, he didn't, but he just didn't think yeah. about one medium. Was mm-hmm. only, you can only do this one thing with this mm-hmm. one medium. And I, yeah, I think he was also a part of that, that like, UB, COB, as really pivotal for a lot of people. And I want to take a minute to kind of just shout out to the UB faculty over the years because he was in the school of Stan Burnside when Stan Burnside and others were at UB. Um, he was a part of that crew. Mm. And I know a lot of other people who went to RISD and other schools like that and said, you know, where I turned the corner was not at RISD. Mm. It was at COB. Oh my yeah. goodness. And it was with, you know, Stan Burnside or it was with Antonius Roberts or it was with Heino Schmidt. I mean, these people yeah. are like sages to mm-hmm. students. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah. I think it's a whole, it's just a manifestation of this kind of like series of mentor mentee kind of relationships that go on and on and I think that John would have touched a lot of people Mm -hmm. in a private way Mm -hmm. that even now have public uh, a lot more public uh, notoriety and visibility and exposure than he would have had I mean especially the younger artists now I mean it's Mm -hmm. next level like what what our young artists are how global they are Mm yeah You know, and a lot of people could tell maybe and, a bigger resume in and, that regard, but and not, I think what not I'm, deeply touching people. Yeah, and I think no. what I mean about, like, a lot of people do know him. They also know him a lot from Junkanoo and because he remained kind of very true to himself. And But, again, I think what enraged me and about when he passed and I was, yeah, just, and still enrages me, mm-hmm. is how little we invest. And I talk about that all the time. And people are always like, orange economy this and orange economy that. But you know what? Let's talk, real talk. No, mm-hmm. sorry. No one's spending $7 million on an art thing. They're spending it on sports. And, um, and you know, we talk about COB and UB, and they've done so much with so little. We still don't have a BA program. This is why artists have to go to RISD, or they have to leave the country. And then what happens is they, they lose their connection to people here, because it's like once you leave and you're off at your fancy art school or whatever, or how people perceive it, mm. it there's this sort of disconnect. So I think what... Again, it's more about the systems we have in place here. And I know UB's trying to get a BA program going so that Bahamians can stay home and, and do it here. And they don't need to raise the money and sell the farm and beg people to go to be an artist. And there's not the respect of, like, becoming an artist. Mm-hmm. There's not the respect. You know, I land, I travel a lot from my job, and I come to the airport, and I see all the sport wall. And that's great. Not Again, I'm not dissing any of those people that deserve their flowers. Where are the photographs of the art masters? These people are known in the rest of the world. The rest of the world cares about them more than we do here. Mm -hmm. Um, Why isn't Stan Burns out of the airport? Why isn't Antonius Roberts at the airport? Why isn't Jackson Burns out of the airport? You know, I could, Amos Burns, whoever. Why don't we have a wall of, of, of fame? They have done things that in the world are the same as the Olympics, right? Giovanna Swaby should be getting a junk new rush out every time she comes home. She's had a museum show globally. This is, a, this is a young woman from the Bahamas who's, what, 30? She is, people know her. You go into rooms overseas and you say Geo Swaby, you say LeVar Monroe, you say Tavara Storm. People know those people, and at home we don't know them. Mm-hmm. We don't teach them at school. We don't, you know, the, the state There's of, a lot of people like that, right? I mean, you go back a as lot far of people, as, yeah. like, I mean, Williams. I mean, there's, of course, yeah. I mean, there's many I'm missing out, right? I'm yeah. just, yeah. but so that, I think, is what... Is you know the loss of John has been huge, huge, but it's also just it makes you realize like how 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 not, not far we've come to mm-hmm. to like honor and then we wait for people to pass and then then mm-hmm. there's going to be politicians standing up and being like oh he was so fantastic mm-hmm. well you know what he was also fantastic you know last year mm-hmm. and um, and that's what enrages me. yeah. Okay. Right. Someone sent me your Facebook post, and um, you were definitely angry. Um, what can we do to change? <laughs> what can we do to change this? I mean, because um, yeah, yeah, they they well, don't get it. I, I guess. Th- I um, think. But I think what it is, it's it's a slow change, yeah. but it is changing. It is changing. Right. I think that there's people changing. were lucky enough to be in positions of you know influence, mm-hmm. and uh, we're you know we're close to policymakers, but also we're in close to people who have. The capacity to change mindsets, and I think that's what that's what we're doing. So, you know, in John's passing, I'm thinking about it as positive as I can. Mm-hmm. He's a loss mm-hmm. of a friend mm-hmm. first mm-hmm. before all this other stuff. But I think that we can do stuff. There's a catalyst that mm-hmm. it it it, it kind of pushes things along, gives us an urgency to kind of get things uh, because we are going to be talking about 
uh, him and other people, you know, as a result of his passing, it kind of brings it brings to the front of the conversation. You know, I have people who I didn't even know knew that I was close to him saying, oh, man, I'm so sorry to hear. I mean, people at work, mm -hmm. you know, saying mm -hmm. like, oh, man, we, we should do something. Mm -hmm. Oh, da, da, da. I mean, mm -hmm. and like Amanda says, it's unfortunate that we have to wait for bad things to happen yeah, for us to do it. Good. However, I think that we need to mark, mark it and actually, mm -hmm. you know, advance the ball mm -hmm. in these moments. Um, just as a country to, to, to recognize different types of intelligence, right? So, mm -hmm. um, you know, like Amanda says, all due respect to all of our fantastic athletes, I think it's phenomenal, but we do have some incredible people in mm -hmm. the creative sphere who are operating yeah. globally that we don't recognize, mm -hmm. well, you know? We're talking with Amanda Colson and John Cox. We're remembering John Beadle. Want to hear from you all as well. Um, give us a call, 323-6232. Three two five four three one six three two five four two five nine. Call us toll free two four two three hundred five seven two zero. Tweet us, Facebook us, or text us four two two four seven nine six. So, what is going to be done? Any are there any plans? Are we going to have there an exhibit? Are, I, I, or well, I think you things are still in early phases, so I don't want to speak out of turn. But certainly, in terms of the art community, we you know we because again, he had so many. He was in so many worlds, so we're really speaking from you know the art community's standpoint, mm -hmm. yeah. um, not from the junk in the community, not from his family. But you know, we're certainly sitting and we're thinking through like, you know, we have plans. Let's just put it that way. And mm -hmm. part of it is archiving, like that's something you know before. Like now, all these young artists, they've all got their own website, they've got an Instagram, mm -hmm. they're there in perpetuity. Who does that for the people you know that? didn't have that in their day. Mm. Like, you know, when we did the Eddie Minna show at the gallery, it was like trying to track down the paintings, trying to track down. So there's a certain amount of archiving that has to be done. And again, that you know, to be crass, that needs money. Like someone's got to finance mm -hmm. someone to sit down and like do a call and sift through stuff. And, mm. you know, so I think archiving is part of it. And then again, as John said, we've thought about that as a catalyst for like, how do we do that? How, how do we do that as a practice anyhow? So that it's not like, oh, my God, someone just died. Now we have to, like, ask yeah. everyone for it. So how do we yeah. intentionally kind yeah. of... I think our, our, our consciousness is, you know, it's dynamic, right? So mm -hmm. these things happen. Mostly it happens when people pass away. You kind of have this, like, heightened sense of awareness and urgency to do something. Mm -hmm. And it isn't always, like, moving forward, right? Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's about, like, looking back and going, like, okay, so... Wow, there's we 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 should have done this when these other people passed away mm -hmm. as well, mm -hmm. and this is a moment for us to do mm -hmm. that. And the cool thing about John Beadle for me is that he transcends so many arenas, right? Mm -hmm. And I, that's the amazing thing is that creatives are not in this. I think you know the, the old way of thinking about it is that you know artists are in the periphery of the periphery, and you know you're born this way, and you you can't cultivate this up. Uh, the skill and whatever and the, the 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 whole concept of being a creative or an artist is really kind of vague and abstract to a lot of people mm -hmm. um, but we realize that it's it's not really and that creatives are finding themselves all over the space and are relevant in so many different aspects of the world um, and in our community is no exception to that so I mean John I think of kind of epitomizes that and I think the good thing is that he can find or we can find him on the pinnacle of so many different areas, which kind of allow us to kind of bring things together in a way. You know, I, I just, I think it's, it's really important. Um, I think we have some interesting inspirational things on the horizon to do as mm -hmm. a result of his passing, um, which I think will also bring light to just an awareness mm -hmm. that I think John was about. Like he didn't, you know, probably doesn't want to have a statue of himself put no. on, on no, the no, highway. No, 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 like no, no, that, no. that would not make him happy. <laughs> right. um, so we do not want to do that. Um, <laughs> however, we want to do things that will just kind of like spark, I think, quietly mm -hmm. um, and privately the yeah. kind of inspiration that he would have had on people. Because mm -hmm. this yeah. guy, that hit me. Mm -hmm. I'm telling you, like people pass on a lot. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But that one, I was like, whoa. Wow. Yeah. And and I, I, need, I, need, I, need, I need, needed several yeah. moments to catch myself, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Are there any areas uh, around the island and around the country where people would pass by and you, you would say, they could say, oh, that's, that's John Beadle there? Or Probably at the airport. He has uh, work. There was uh, the new airport. I think they commissioned about 12 artists to do mm -hmm. fairly significant work. Mm -hmm. 
And so he has a piece of the Junkanoo drummers, like kind of old fashioned Junkanoo. I don't think they're only drummers. It's like three Junkanoo musicians, yeah, yeah. like mm-hmm. kind of like before in, you get to the U.S. terminal. Yeah, yeah. they're outside, mm-hmm. and they are labeled. I think that's a significant step in the right direction. Yeah. Um, but as far as public works, he yeah. has works over at Atlantis. Right. Um, in the first early, I don't want to say the first, but early phases of Atlantis, there's I think a significant dome, mm-hmm. um, the inner part of a dome of one of their food and beverage areas mm. he did yeah. and then he was involved with Jackson Brown he was a part of the Jammin series yeah. okay. um, which had like five different iterations so well, I think he was in yeah. two of well, them and right? also I mean you don't want to say this because you work there but I'm going to say it you know at Bahamar they have in the Fairwind they have an exhibition called Fairwind which is really like an 150 year overview of Bahamian art history and it's just right there in the conference center and you can just walk right in and see it mm-hmm. and there's a lot of beetle work in yeah, there we as well there, yeah. but they got tons of beetle work and that's the thing it's like nothing no, no one thing sums up his practice right Mm-hmm. He was a pain. and these the t-shirts we're all wearing, mm-hmm. you know, these were made out of cardboard. So he oh, loved wow. to make artwork yeah. out of cardboard mm-hmm. at the NAGB. So it's like sometimes his work was sort of ephemeral in a way, mm-hmm. you know, because he loved to play with those materials that that also come from the culture of Junkanoo. Yeah. And yeah. so he did these massive sculptures, but, yeah. but all out of cardboard. I also know? I think you know what was interesting about him too and different is that I think he felt a a degree of responsibility with his with his the level of his skill. You know, some people, I think, would take up a position, whether it's political or whatever, and say, well, I'm not going to do this. I'm not going to help. I'm frustrated by the system, so I'm not going to participate. He would participate. Always. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I know this from my hat, one of my hats being like a a curatorial person, like, you know, curating exhibitions or doing projects, whether it be at the NAGB or at Pop-Up or at Bahama or whatever. And I would, like, I could ask an artist who would be his far his junior who would they themselves feel like they were pretty far along in their career Mm -hmm. in a certain way that would be in a particular arrangement and I would say hey we're doing this project would you like to participate oh no I can't do that I can't be associated with this project or I can't be associated with these with these artists or whatever John would say yes to just about everything Mm -hmm. and Mm -hmm. it didn't matter if there was like high school students doing Mm -hmm. it or Mm -hmm. if it was going to be you know, whomever, right? Mm-hmm. It, it could be the, the the biggest global name and artist. He could operate at that level and have that conversation, but he was never like too big or too important to say, "Oh, I'm going to do this mm. competition thing." Yeah, I'll do that. I'll mm-hmm. I'll, I'll participate yeah, in that. True. If it was, if it had the right amount of creative rigor and it was thoughtful, mm-hmm. he would get into it Wonderful. because I think he felt like I need to contribute. I need to share mm-hmm. what mm-hmm. I have with mm-hmm. people, and Excellent. I I mm-hmm. love that about him. Yeah. Wow. I, I was trying to remember where I saw the, the work on the shirt, and it was at the NAGB. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Got some calls coming. Let's take these. Uh, good morning, caller. You're on the air. Yeah, good morning, Mr. Strawn, and to your guest. Hi, good morning. Yeah, of course, I'm familiar with Amanda Coulson, <laughs> her voice. She has a unique voice. But, you know, the thing is, I just wanted to share this because, you know, I call this one. I'd forgotten to give my condolences to John Beadle. And so him and I would have started from grade one at Mabel Walker Primary School, Okay. Uh, and so his parents live in Golden Gates, and I live across the road in Sunshine Park. So John and I were very closely played, socking, drop kicking, marbles. We did everything. Uh, the thing is, John had this ability from, I could remember, let's say, I could remember from grade five, but like grade six. You know, I could remember him being an impressive, of course, he, he was doing this from primary school, okay? So I mean, maybe he might have told people that, but he, he, he was just always able to do this. Now, I, I, I used to hear him on the show now and then, but uh, I, I glimpsed him like years back. I uh, guess I was traveling, maybe coming from the States, but I, I, I lost track of him. We never really saw one that much. But I heard him on this show a few years ago, right, right Ms. Colson? And so, you know, I, I, I heard him mention where I could look at some of his work. But it, it, it reached me because, you know, he came from humble beginners at Mabel Walker. And the thing is, John, maybe, I, I heard he was 60, so I'm going to be 60 in August. So he only could have been 60 this year or last year late. Yeah. Two and weeks so, ago. Uh, Two weeks ago. It, it touched Two me, you know, ago. because, you know, he's someone that I knew and grew up with. Mm-hmm. In the sweet old days, you know. So uh, my condolences again. So just, I really would like for the repeat where I could go and look at some of his work. You see. Mm. And uh, another question is, you know, uh, is there anywhere you can get artwork appraised? Because I had called the gallery a few weeks ago, and my parents died, and it's a lot of artwork. And some art uh, for I, I I don't really have no idea what they value. And so you I, I just off the air, just leave your number with the producer, and we'll get back to you. Because yes, there's a oh, way to okay, have thanks, all right, all right. No, no, of course, oh, no yeah. problem. So producer, you can and, get. And uh, I do want to say that, like, 
I know for some people, like even the NAGB, it's like and where I don't work anymore, right? But where I used to work, and I still love that space so much. You know, it seems intimidating. Like it's a big fancy house, or even going to Bahamar can be intimidating for some people, right? Because mm-hmm. the Fairwind is, is free. Like you can just like walk in, right, to the convention center. Mm-hmm. Um, you can get the bus out there, and and and. But there's this feeling of like, oh, I don't know, like I don't belong in that space, or it's not for. Can I just say that like art people of any like love people coming in and asking them questions and seeing the work. And so I just really encourage anyone who's even rem- remotely interested, go to any art gallery you can. There's so many. There's 6260 downtown on Bay Street. There's um, Cab. There's Turn. There's the Bahamar. There's the current N Echo. There's the National Art Gallery. There's so much now. And I'm sure sometimes they feel like weird, right? Mm. And <laughs> for lack of a better word. Mm. But everyone there just wants to share in the talent of Bahamian artists. Like, everyone's just dying to have people come in. Mm, And then, like, so I just would encourage people, like, really, um, you know, probably Bahamar is the easiest. And, you know, again, that's that's another thing. And I don't, there's not shade against the NAGB where, you know, I worked. And I, I, again, love that place, still love that place. It's got a great show on right now. The whole collection, the whole national collection is on view, right? And you can just walk in and just see all of it. You can see 100 years of Bahamian art history. Um, but, you know, Bahamar has done a show there that's really like a museum quality show, like globally. And um, and it's there all the time. Mm-hmm. And you can, you know, you can just, and it doesn't cost anything. It's just just the bus fare to get to the campus. Mm-hmm. And I just really encourage people to do it because we have these gems. We ha- And every time it happens, I used to say it all the time when I had the show and John was on the show, you know. We just had the global director of all the Art Basel fairs down in the Bahamas. And he just came on vacation. And for people who don't know what that is, it's just a big art fair. There's one in Hong Kong. There's one in Miami. There's one in Basel. There's one, they're all over the world. And massive art galleries and artists go to this thing. And it's a big, it's a big, it's, it's again, it's a form of, I would say the Venice Biennial is the Olympics of the art world, but it's, it's up there. Mm. And, he, and he came down and he just was like, I can't believe this. This is all so amazing. Mm-hmm. Like, and that's always what people say. Any museum director who's come down here, curator mm-hmm. that's come down here. Why are we, and in a way, it's like, why are we waiting for these, again, foreigners to tell us how well we're doing? We are, oh. we are doing so well, right? Yeah, we are. And somehow oh. we don't, I don't see that level of appreciation in, mm-hmm. in, in a lot of people. No. And, um, and it's, it's like we're knocking it out of the park. And the rest of the Caribbean is like, look at what the Bahamas is yeah. doing. We mm-hmm. had the Museums, Museums Association of the Caribbean here last March, a year ago. We had 250 museum delegates from all over the world here. The NHB organized it with, C- uh, with the Central Bank of the Bahamas. And again, they were all like, you guys, what, kind, what do you got in the water here that mm. you're su- su- such good exactly. artists, such good institutions, such good galleries? We're, you know, and, and I just feel like... Yeah, this year in particular, I mean, if you follow art, the, the, the series of art exhibitions that the collective of galleries has been opening, yeah. solid. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, 2024 is wow. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. mean, cab turn out folks. I mean, our gallery as well. Mm-hmm. Uh, people are doing people are doing exceptional work, and I agree with what Amanda's saying. We we just the ingredients are there. We just mm-hmm. need to cook the soup. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, yeah. it's like <laughs> you know, like we we are in a position of of we are in a good space. All right, yeah. let's take this call, and then I want to ask you if if the media can do something to help to. Do more to help to get the word out. Is that what's going on? Um, caller, you're on the air, though. Good morning. Are you there? Hi, good morning. You're on the air. Good morning. Yes. Hi. Good morning to your guest. I'd mm-hmm. like to reflect upon John Beadle, another schoolmate of ours. Um, he uh, graduated from AF Adley together. I normally mention um, 52 being a Schoolmate and Michael Pintard and Miles Lerota. But John was always a serious artist ever since uh, junior high school. And I always used to say to him, you know, John, you all, you know, um, will capture the world with um, your talents. There was another classmate of ours, Jolyon Smith. Jolyon, yeah. Yes. Yeah. We all graduated from AFRLE together. Mm-hmm. Um, my condolences goes out to him and uh, um, his family and to the wider community of his artist uh, family. Um, I 
really like to say too, um, Michael Pintard need to explain to me how come I didn't get to buy any pieces of his artwork because another classmate of ours, Eric Ellis, and I had gotten a couple of pieces of those when Michael Pintard was selling artwork, and I feel I'm empty now that I don't have any pieces of artwork from John Beadle, mm-hmm. you see, mm-hmm. and also that, you know, the eastern end of that property that the government purchased from me that goes with the art gallery on Hospital Lane Corner. Um, yes, I, you know, feels very connected and disappointed, but, you know, my condolences to the whole okay. Bahamas. John was always a very serious person from uh humble days in school. Thank you very much. Appreciate it, caller. Well, if people are interested, um, is that a possibility at all? Do you know if you want to buy um, works from John Beadle? Is this, how, mm, how does one do that? Might be a tough moment now yeah. to yeah. do that. Yeah, because um, yeah, they would be in his estate mm-hmm. and probably be uh, being managed, you yeah. know, because I think that happens anytime an artist passes away. Like yeah. all of the kind of inventory that they have gets you know, managed yeah. at that point in one way or another. Um, but I think one of the things too, though, I mean, in, in lieu of physically owning the work is actually giving exposure to it, right? Mm-hmm. And so I think as Amanda mentioned, you know, NAGB has a phenomenal exhibition on at the moment, the permanent, the full national collection is on display. We, we the Bahamar, we have a lot of John Beatles works on display, um, you know, and there's some rumblings of us trying to do something to, 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 to bring a bigger body of his work to collect uh, to a bigger body of his work together for for public you know exposure through like a collaborative kind of effort through institutions and so on um, so I think that you know where we can't own you know we can experience yeah. and I think mm-hmm. that's maybe what we need to think that's the new experiencing is the new ownership you know yeah. <laughs> because there's only so many objects in the yeah. world um, yeah. Yeah. and there's more people who are close to close to individuals, then there are objects this year around. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so we need to just create exposure. Yeah. What was missing from that soup you mentioned, that recognition soup? Uh, who, who are the artists waiting for them to say, you guys are doing a great job here hmm. in the Bahamas? I think, it's, I think it's probably from like an institutional level. It's not so much the artists. The practices are going well. People are doing things. People are inspired and working well and challenging each other. I think that's good. And I think we're on the verge of connecting the dots. You know, mm-hmm. like I, I feel like we have institutions that have deep, rich uh, histories and ethos that we can kind of carve canals from one body of water to the other and kind of yeah. like create a bigger, more effective ecosystem where, yeah. you know, Amanda occupies a particular space and has a particular skill and particular influence that is unmatched mm-hmm. by anybody. You know, Antonius Roberts has a similar dynamic, yeah. which is very different, yeah. you know, different people have different kind of um, opportunities and access to uh, just access to opportunities. Yeah. Put it like this. Um, and I think we just need to start making those connections um, and start, you know, reinventing how we see things. Amanda made mm-hmm. mention of the this global director of Art Basel mm-hmm. and how major that is. I did a presentation at the Bahamas Outlook uh, conference earlier this year and um, Amanda's an art fair guru she started an amazing art fair called Volta um, 25 mm-hmm. years ago move on move on <laughs> right yeah. however though um, what we talk about access right so art fairs and Amanda might correct me on this but like traditional museum visitorship is significantly out um, outpaced by visitorship of art fairs yeah. right and wow. so I we took some statistics I had a conversation with the acting ED of NAGB and found out how much foot traffic the NAGB had in a year. And it was about just under 8,000 people mm. went and, to and, the NAGB and, and in when, a year. Yeah, and when you think how many people come in downtown on those cruise ships. Mm-hmm. Right. And again, like how many we people have, should be going there. Exactly. But it's also not just, again, we don't just want tourists. It's also Bahamians. Right. Yeah. There's 8,000, yeah. probably 5,000 of them are actually Bahamian. Cause, yeah. Um, but I'm just like, but, we could have so many more. Yeah, we could right? have a ton more. But the, but the comparison is, so we have 8 million tourists, X amount of tourists coming through. And whether, for whatever reason, they're here. And Amanda says the majority of the people who are probably Bahamian who went there. Mm-hmm. The fairs that we participate in, 
had near a hundred thousand people mm-hmm. in goodness. six days. In six days. Wow. In six and, days. Yeah, and, compared and, to eight thousand in twelve months. Yeah. Mm. So we need to just move. Yeah. Move, move the, you know, move the salt and pepper over yeah. here where where mm-hmm. you know yeah, it, yeah. it's going to get picked yeah. up and put yeah. in the soup. You know. Yeah, and also, well, again, like Art Basel. When it came to Miami, South Beach, South Beach was the murder capital. The of the, it yeah. was murder capital of South Florida, yeah, and yeah. now it's like all that development, all those hotels, all those restaurants. Again, that's from art. That's yeah. from an art event. And happening. we and we are I, I'm th- talking about cooking soup. I think, but as Amanda mentioned at the MAC conference last year, so many people in the region look to us as like, oh, you guys are leading and doing such an amazing job. Not just in the region, but from the world. I strongly believe that the Bahamas is best situated to galvanize the region in this way. Yeah. And so I think this is the soup that we're cooking right now and hopefully we'll be able to do more amazing mm-hmm. things and bring and create our own kind of art fair dynamic that's relevant to us in our own way. Well, before so that, that's co- positive. Before that, I was asking if the media is uh, doing enough. Um, when we talk about our, our Basel, in the, when you watch Miami stations, when that's happening, it's every Everywhere. single break, every uh, yeah. news article is about uh, our yeah. Basel from what's happening to the traffic and all this stuff, everything you need to know. Pl- you you won't flights stop leaving hearing. Have people right. going to yeah, 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 You yeah, won't yeah, stop yeah, hearing yeah. about yeah. it, but yeah. um, but it doesn't seem to be I think quite it's the media, situation here. I think it's media and communication. I mean, you yeah. th- there's been conversations. We were talking, Amanda and I were talking about about Blank Canvas when we came in. Blank Canvas is one show. There should be 10 shows like that. People should be <laughs> podcasting and whatever, mm-hmm. just talking about things. And I think it's also just communications in general, just promotion and advertising. You talk about Art Basel when you fly in, like the flags start showing right. up at the right. airport and yeah. you mm-hmm. see them all the way to when you get there. We mm-hmm. need to start seeing art promotions going over to Paradise Island on the bridge, mm-hmm. billboards that show who people mm-hmm. are. You know what I mean? Like I think this is, yeah. this. these are the opportunities. And I think... It's a problem when you want to do something and you don't have content. And, yeah, we have the yeah, content. We have the content. I would, just, just, I would love yeah. to be traveling and be like, oh, yeah, um, I live in the Bahamas. And for someone to not say, oh, the pigs. <laughs> and again, I get the pigs. I get the pigs. I got nothing against the pigs. Very cute. But I'm like, I would love someone to be like, oh, Stan Burnside. Oh, yeah. I heard your museum's awesome. Oh, you know, and this, these are these are also art people I'm talking to, right? These are in art community. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, so I just think, yeah, communication. I think I think we'll get there. And, mm-hmm. you know? I think we will, and I'm gonna definitely. I do see the change, so I'm 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 still angry, but because um, I will remain to be very passionate. But it's slow, and and this idea that it's something elite is something that really irritates me too. Because you mm-hmm. know, most of the artists did not come from some like wealthy family. Yeah. You know, artists. That's not where artists come from, and so that why it ends up being this like, oh, that's just for like fancy people. And people have good jobs. And all the galleries we've created, we're employing people. Mm -hmm. Those are young Bahamians that went off and got an art history degree or an English degree or something. Their parents were probably like, why are you doing that? (laughs) They got good jobs now. And, you know, and and in the last 10 years, we've really seen that, both with the NAGB and with Bahamar and with Cat. And there's all these spaces opening. And even to be a practicing artist, John Beadle was actually you know, a successful artist, right? And there are many of them who live in decent houses and have sent their kids to college. So this idea that it's for broke people, you're going to live in a garret, it's not going to take you anywhere, that's just, mm-hmm. it's a myth. Mm-hmm. It really is. And the more we create these opportunities, where one of the things I'm the most proud of of being at a commercial gallery, and everyone's like, oh, you've gone to the dark side, you've left the museum. There are Bahamian artists that now can quit their jobs and just work full time being an artist in their studio, yeah. right? That's a big deal. And that mm-hmm. once we get a BA at UB, which I know they're working on, so again, I'm not throwing shade at UB. I know they're pushing there. Then people won't have to go away. And like it's creating this industry exists. This is a multi million dollar industry, yeah. as well as being something beautiful and nourishing. Why would a commercial gallery be the dark side? <laughs> because it's about money, right? It's not about education. <laughs> oh, it's not I, about you know. Um, when I found out about Turn, I was like, ah, uh, that's amazing. Yeah. yeah. No, it's another space. Right. No, it's amazing to do that. I think we have to, with the, the industry building, we have people who are working in the industry. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I think we often think, you know, 
oh, Muhammad Ali. Like he's just like this individual that had nobody around him. We have to you have to have the people around. Right. You Trainer. have to have the team. You have yeah. to have yeah. the coaches. You have to have the the the, the representatives, the stadium. The business people. Who's the stadium. building the yeah. court? Yeah. Who's mm-hmm. maintaining the court? Who's selling the tickets to the people who come to the right. court? Like all of right. these things yeah. are yeah. part of that. And I think that's what we're starting to see. And I rather show it once we've done it, then say, well, this is what we're going to do. And mm-hmm. I think that's what's happening. I think more is happening than is being recognized. Right. And so I think good things are coming to be realized. And there's a lot of work to still be done. Yeah. By mm-hmm. no means do we ever rest on our laurels, but people are working. Amanda's doing an amazing job. There's a lot of things actually yeah. happening in the back. But it is like pushed by us in a yeah. way. And we would like to see more kind of yeah. public support, mm-hmm. I yeah. guess. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Well, yeah. We've got about 20 seconds. Um, have we heard anything about funeral arrangements? Do we know anything about that at, at this point? We do, but I'm not sure if we're, yeah. if we should be. Yeah, I, I, yeah. maybe, okay. maybe you can have people reach in because we just, out of respect for the family, yeah. I'm not sure mm-hmm. exactly how they want to manage that. But yes, I'm sure if there's something, maybe it could be made public on your platform later. Okay, yeah. sure. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, um, it's unfortunate that we, uh, that had to be the reason why you're here talking about this, um, but definitely we're going to do this more often. And rest in power, JP. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. John Beadle will never forget you. Um, John Cox, Amanda Colson, thank you so much for being here this morning. We're going to take a quick break and be back to wrap things up. This is Morning Blend Business on Guardian Radio 96.9. The signs are clear. It's time to pay less for your current mortgage by switching to Scotiabank. Enjoy lower interest rates and no payments up to two months when you switch to Scotiabank today. Plus, we'll even pay your switch costs. It's that easy. Ready to switch to Scotiabank? Call us today at 242-356-1697 or visit bs.scotiabank.com to switch your mortgage to become mortgage-free faster. Are you ready for the best of the best? Keep the vibe alive music group up for sound promotion. And Guardian Radio presents the best of the best Rake and Script Explosion Concert. Mark your calendars for May 11th as Super Club Breezes grounds Ignite with Bahamian Talent. Featuring KB, Gino D, Funky D, Veronica Bishop, The Brylanders, Avi, Elon Moxie, and Shine242. Join the Falcons, Iron Store, Phil Pierre, Johnny Cake, Mama D. Nishi LS, Pat Rami, Stevie S, and Chad Colley and the VIPs for an electrifying night of music and culture. Tickets are flying, so grab yours now. Available online at BahamasEtickets.com or swing by the Beauty Shack on Soldier Road and Carmichael Road. This is the event of the year. The best of the best rake and scrape explosion at Breezes Resorts. Gates open at 6 p.m. Don't miss out on the Bahamian magic. And uh, be sure to pick up today's Guardian, NASA Guardian, for the latest in business news. Um, uh, this portion of, of uh, Morning Land Business brought to you by CFAL, Growing Wealth for Future Generations. Chester Robards, thank you so much for being here on a Friday. Yeah, always a pleasure. And you're going to be here on a Monday and Very Tuesday well, and Wednesday and Thursday and Friday because I'll be taking some Yay. time off um, and leave you in Chester Robards' capable hands. As I, you have a good time in Nepal. No, don't do that. Don't do that. <laughs> the people are going to be like, I will be... I won't be there. So you're but not I'll be going to climb Mount Everest? Cel- n- not okay. doing that, no. Um, but I will be celebrating my birthday yeah. on Sunday. Yeah. So, um, But everybody have a great time with Chester. I'll be back next month. Um, uh, have a great weekend. And uh, stay tuned for On the Clock with Aaron Green next. <laughs> this is Guardian Radio 96.9 FM, Nassau, Bahamas.